Optimism of the Scotland fans. Highlights tonight, 10.40, BBC One Scotland. More to come from Tom English and Craig Levine. Right now, settle back for the whole experience live here in sports and the BBC Radio Scotland. It is Scotland against Spain. Match day two, Group A of qualifying for Euro 2024. You'll hear throughout from Willie Miller, from Liam Crichton and from our match commentator, Liam McLeod. What a night, what a night it could be as Scotland pit their wits against the top seeds in Euro 2024 qualifying Group A. Both sets of players now out and ready for the national anthem, starting with the visitors. Scotland beat the top seeds in a European Championship qualifying group here was France back in October 2006. Now it's time for Hampden Park to discover its roar. is ready, sell out Hamden Park for Scotland against Spain, the 13th meeting between them, but that does discount the abandoned friendly in Valencia back in 04, which was tied at 1-1 before a lightning strike put the lights out, James McFadden who's a few seats off to our left says that goal still counts, or perhaps that does count as a meeting, but it is of course the first competitive games between the sides since the qualification campaign to get to Euro 2012. Spain won both of them, 3-2 here, 3-1 in Alicante, as the Scots look to wound a top seed. And given what happened in Batumi in Georgia earlier on, anything the Scots get out of this is a huge bonus. 1-1 it finished between the Georgians and Norway. Scotland's main rivals, possibly for second spot, you would think. But then again, they come up against a Spain team that's been put together for the first time, really. Tonight, the Scots line up with Angus Gunn in goal. It's a back three there of Porteous, Hanley and Tierney. Hickey and Robertson are wide, with McTominay and McGregor supporting McGinn and Christie, who are behind Lyndon Dykes. For Spain, Chelsea's Kepa keeps goal. Spurs' Pedro Porro at uh, right back. Jose Gaia, Valencia on the other side. Debutant David Garcia of Osasuna beside Inigo Martinez of Athletic Bilbao in the middle, with Mikel Merino of Real Sociedad beside Manchester City's Rodri, Mikel Oryasabal, Dani Ceballos and Jeremy Pino across the middle there behind the striker Hosselu, who scored twice against the Norwegians in Malaga in that game on Saturday. So just about ready to go then under the lights, Scotland in the navy shirts, white shorts, navy socks, Spain all in their famous red La Roja. And in a huddle off to the right, Scotland will attack the east stand in this first half as we watch 
way up high above Steve Clark's technical area in the main south stand. So Scotland left to right, Spain right to left, and it will be the visitors who'll kick off. Hossalou of Espanyol will take the first touch. This could be a seismic night here on Glasgow's south side. What can this Scottish team come up with against the top seeds and three-time European champions? And, of course, 2010 World Cup winners. Spain kick off. Hossalou back to the skipper, Rodri. And he shifts it over to the left-hand side. The left centre-back, Martinez. And he plays it short to Garcia, who is making his international debut. I want to press him, if at all possible. What kind of style will this Spanish team adopt tonight? We know what they normally do. As Scotland get a first feel of the ball, McTominay back to Hickey, sweeps it into the Spanish half, and it's headed over to this near side by Garcia. And it's good play down the left flank here for Spain with Gaia. And then his ball forward did reach its target, or Yasabal, but Scotland win it back at the edge of their box and clear. So important as ever that Scotland start this well. They need to get a feel of the game and not let Spain dictate in these early stages. Absolutely, Liam, you're spot on, and I think that's exactly what Scotland will look to try and do with a bit of calm and, and composure, I think, as well. I think that's important. You don't want to feel rattled early on. You don't want to feel harassed and forced into making decisions, but already you can see the shape of, of Scotland and how they look very firm in that back five out of possession. Although there's a front three with the press, you know, uh, McGinn and Christie are up there supporting Lyndon Dyke. So they've got that intent if they win it back. They've got numbers in support. Kip, I think the ball forward, it comes off the head of Portis, nodding it into the Spanish half, and then it's McGinn, Mike break Lyndon Dykes at the edge of the box, he shoots, it's blocked though by Poro, and Spain tried to scramble it clear, it's run back brilliantly by Christie there, out to the left-hand side for the skipper Robertson of Liverpool, and he goes back to Tierney, to McTominay, works a nice little exchange there with McGregor, then to the right of the centre circle for Portis, and almost two minutes in, it's out with Aaron Hickey on this near side, as he rolls it back onto the halfway line for Porteous and then to the towering Grant Hanley who earns his 48th cap this evening short ball to Tierney and back to Grant Hanley but least Willie in the first couple of minutes Scotland getting a feel of the ball here they are yeah and uh, you know they're looking comfortable on it as I say that <laughs> Brian Porteous uh, plays a very simple pass right out the park so you know he went from um, you know the Cyprus game being really accurate in that first half to making his first error and I think it's really important that you don't make any errors early in the game you know you always want to I think start the game with nice positive touches anything that you do you do it confidently um, you know and in that case it didn't happen for Porters I don't think it will affect them but you know Scotland certainly seen a lot of the ball it is Scotland in possession here with Kieran Tierney it was Barcelona the runaway leaders in La Liga this season and not one Barcelona player in the starting 11 Links of Balde and Gavi on the bench and Spain pick up possession with Martinez and he rolls it out to the right for Pedro Porro he came up against Aberdeen a couple of seasons ago in Europe playing for Sporting Club in Lisbon in the Europa League qualifier as he picks up the ball again on the halfway line it's a long ball down the right but it's going to go behind harmlessly for the goal kick and exactly what Scotland want to see they'd be quite happy if that's what they see most of tonight three minutes in at 0-0 they certainly will I think it will please them Spain just looking we know that they had spoke pr you know, prior to the game in terms of how they would look to play targeting those wide areas looking more at it, putting deliveries into the box for the striker to go and attack just on that occasion it's well over hit and I'm sure pleases Kieran Tierney as he just chased it down and watched it trundle out comes long ball from the goal kick is uh, headed forward by Rodri and picked up on the left-hand side of the pitch by Robertson. He goes back to Angus Gunn, winning his second cap. And the new number one clips it forward into the Spanish half. It's too high for Dykes on this occasion. Garcia wins it. It's dropped in the midfield with Oriasabal, who dinks it forward. The header from Tierney is helped on its way by McTominay. Dykes can't control as Spain pinch it back on the right there with Poro. Steps into the Scotland half and plays it short to the number 10, Ceballos of... Real Madrid, who was an FA Cup winner alongside Kieran Tierney when he was on loan at Arsenal a couple of seasons ago. Doesn't always get a start for his club, Real Madrid, but he's on the ball here, starting for his national team as he plays it along the halfway line to the right there for David Garcia. And it's the Osasuna defender for Rodri. Out to that right-hand side for Poro. Down the line, it goes to Pino. 
Jeremy, as he is known as. It's back in field to Ceballos, low ball forward down the right-hand side of the Scottish half, comes back out to the middle, just outside the centre circle. The ball's prodded forward there by Ceballos. It's cut out, though, and he was trying to squeeze it through to Mikel or Yarzaval, who'd made a good run into the penalty area. But Scotland have it back, and it's McGinn out to Hickey. Forward to McGinn, holding off his man, rolling it along the halfway for McTominay. And now it's Hickey to McGregor, to Porteous, to Hanley, and then to Tierney. And the Scotland fans encouraged by that. Five in, nil-nil. Yeah, I, mean, I think Scotland, you know, at times they're just quite comfortable and quite happy just to have the five spread right along the back. I think the way Spain are playing with possibly the two wide players, it certainly looks like that. Then there's always a question uh, to, to, to be asked and answered is how, how do you, you, you know, release players from the back because your wing backs then tend to get pinned back and you've got that five right across defensively but I think Steve Clark's uh, lined up for that he's he, 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 he's obviously known how they were going to play and uh, they're quite comfortable just now to have the five and then releasing players forward as and when they're in possession Robertson loses it on the far side up against Poro he was in a good atta advanced attacking position there Scotland pick up the scraps with Tierney he rolls it back into his own half for Hanley he goes back to his keeper almost six minutes in, still some empty seats being filled up over in that far corner, the northeast corner of the stadium, I know there'll be plenty who live in the northeast and Tayside and Angus who would have been affected by a lengthy road closure at Glen Cars, just south of Dundee this afternoon, so hopefully everyone's made it, as Tierney rolls it up the line for Ryan Christie, buzzing forward, looking for Robertson, but he gives it straight back to Poro, who goes down looking for a free kick, there's not one coming comes back to McTominay, no! tonight, I didn't think we'd be speaking about Scott McTominay scoring goals, and within seven minutes I've been proven wrong It is what a start to the game isn't it Andy Robertson, putting that press on you, you know, but Poro does go down he, he slips on that surface and we've that seen it on Saturday, Willie, yeah, we know how, how ineffective it was at times for the players with the footwear that they had on Absolutely, and that gives Andy Robertson the opportunity to cut it back he gets his head up to picks out McTominay, and then McTominay it's, it's quite a casual kind of a finish, isn't it? I think it takes maybe a little deflection. Yeah, there's a slight nip. In. But great start. And another assist for Robertson, who's the main man. He's putting things on plates for his teammates, and he's done it again for Scott McTominay. His second was set up by Robertson, who set up the John McGinn goal as well here against the Cypriots. But what a foundation. They've just built themselves in this match. They have the lead. And they've given themselves the ideal platform here albeit perhaps better with eight minutes to play rather than eight minutes gone because Spain will come to life at times in this match but Scotland of the lead could be crucial in this group it's out of play for a goal kick Robertson knocks it back off Pedro Porro and that's going to be a goal kick to the Scots I have to say Luis de la Fuente the new Spanish coach putting this new team effectively out there tonight it could backfire and Scotland have given him something to think about that's for sure just looking at it there the replay it's come off Inigo Martinez on its way through it's probably it may well not have been going in had it not been for the touch off Martinez as it went past Kepa who seemed to be deceived by it yeah he had it covered didn't he Kepa yeah. I thought he was behind it but it's went through the legs of Martinez it's taken that little deflection and it's drifted it past the goalkeeper doesn't matter it doesn't matter which is everything that you tell young players Liam, get your shot, at least get it on target anything can happen whether it comes back out or not Ryan Christie for Hickey's in an offside position as he looks to cross the ball into the box It'll be a free kick to the visitors so just everyone in the National Stadium just gathering their thoughts taking a long deep breath because the Scots don't find themselves in this position terribly often 
certainly not in recent years, having beaten the Spanish since 1984, was the 1986 World Cup qualifiers. Willie was in the team, two from Morris Johnston, one from Kenny Dalglish, his 30th and final international goal it was, and what a goal it, it was. As that's knocked forward there by the Spanish, little push there on Hanley. And that's going to be a free kick given against Jose Lu, who is uh, protesting his innocence to the uh, Swiss referee. That's going to be a Scottish free kick. Midway inside their own half over on the left-hand side. Ten minutes in. Does this have the feel of a special night? It does, Liam, already. It does, and I think even in the anthem, you could feel it around the stadium. Shivers going down the spine as we listen to the fans belting out the anthem, looking at the players on our screens and on the pitch in front of us. And I think when you get this type of start in a game, it, it starts to feel magical because Scotland would have discussed many what-ifs tonight. What if they go behind early? You know, what if they go two goals behind? They would have probably spoke about what if they take the lead, but perhaps not this early on in the game. And it's how you manage that emotion now, how you manage the game plan. Um, but I think the energy in this stadium tonight could very well take them through. Speed of possession, it's knocked out to this left-hand side by Jose Gaia, who goes across halfway, right in front of the watching Steve Clark with his arms behind his back, as ever. It's Soyar Sabal, back to Ceballos, almost came back there, Yar Sabal inside the box, does break back to Danny Ceballos. He's been forced back towards his own goal as he leaves it for Rodri. He turns it back there to Martinez to Ceballos outside the centre circle he's now lurking forward just to the right hand side of the D an opportunity here perhaps for Merino the Real Sociedad player out to the right hand side it's a good ball in just a little bit too high for the man in the middle who was on Yasabal it's a brilliant cross by Poro but it goes out for a throw in off John McGinn for Spain on this near side level with the Scottish penalty spot 1-0 Scotland 11 and a half on the clock it's bowled back the way to Ceballos, seen plenty of the ball, the Spanish number 10, went into their own half for Inigo Martinez, big switch of play to Poro, took it down brilliantly, rolls it in field to Merino, it's another big switch coming up out to this near side for Gaia, he's onto it, under no pressure at the moment, Hickey comes to meet him, Gaia to the left angle of the box, back to Ceballos, surveys what's ahead of him, doesn't like what he sees, but he's managed to thread one through towards Yasabal. It just evades him. He goes behind for the goal kick. That was really good build-up play by the Spanish. And Ceballos knows he's pretty close to playing his teammate in there. 12 minutes to Scotland, 1 Spain nil. It was. It, you, you know, we went back to that five at the back. But, you know, for me, it's a, it's, it's a pretty good line uh, along the 18-yard line that they've held it. Up. I'm not sure he might have drifted into an offside position, even if he'd have got it, but it was... It was certainly very cultured build-up play, wasn't it? And then once you get in and around the box, it's that killer pass that they're looking for. That maybe the Spanish teams in the past haven't looked, like certainly a recent past anyway, they've taken maybe too many touches, but that one was certainly one that we got away with, perhaps. They look to be utilising that switch of play, Liam, as well, which could be dangerous at certain moments because Willie touched on it, the full-back, the wing back, sorry, being pinned back at times. It makes it a real shift for the midfield to cover the distance and the width of the pitch. There's McGinn winning it back, midway inside the Spain half. He's done well, turns, swivels, finds Christie. Christie's got an overlap, plays it low into the box instead and it's blocked and cleared. Collected here by the Celtic captain, McGregor. Out to the far side, touchline for Robertson, into Christie, flashes one into the box, too close to Pepa, who holds on comfortably in the six-yard line, and will remain after 13, Scotland 1, Spain 0. The Scots enjoying what they're seeing so far. Craig Levine, former Scotland manager, are you enjoying what you're seeing so far? Yeah, I mean, what a brilliant start. Um, what really needed to happen for the crowd to get right behind the team immediately, and what better way to do it than to go in front? I mean, I do think the pitch had a part to play in it, Liam. I mean, it certainly looked as if uh, Porro slipped on the, the far side, but Scotland didn't have to take advantage of it. And McTominay, obviously, he's got confidence from his couple of goals at the weekend, and he arrives late in the box, and yes, he gets a deflection, but I, I just feel it's one of those nights where hopefully things keep going our way. We'll go to Craig every now and again throughout the match as John McGinn collects and side puts it into the centre circle for Christie's on his bike now driving forward. He's got three in navy blue ahead of him. Christie's now up to the edge of the box, opened up for him, and he's just flashed his shot wide. Oh, that's so close. Mm -hmm. Kepa <laughs> didn't even dive for it. Christie.
see those off target. And it stays Scotland one. Spain nil. That parted like the Red Sea for Christie. It's about a foot wide. It did, didn't it? I mean, you're expecting one of the Spanish defenders to take a bit of responsibility there. I mean, he's inside the box when he eventually gets that left foot to strike off. He's just inside the box. Um, and it, it does go by, perhaps by you, you know a yard or so. But at the same time, really positive play, picking it up, just driving at defenders. Defenders don't like that. I can tell you that from experience. And none of them taking responsibility and allowing them to have that shot. And it's ever so close. The run from McTominay was excellent as well. He ran right across the Spanish defence, peeled off from inside to out, and really stretched them. Willie it allowed the space to open up. That's why they parted in the manner in which they did. There's a long ball over the head of Porteous, though, and Oryasabal left-hand side of the box. Checks his run, level with the penalty spot. Brilliantly defended by Porteous. He draws the foul as well. That is the perfect result for Ryan Porteous. That's what he set out to do there, and Oryasabal is punished, and Scotland have a free kick just to the right-hand side of their box. Scotland won, Spain nil, but already there's a, there's a few frustrated looks in red shirts down there. Well, when you get a blow like that, you know, ten changes as well. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're quality players out there, but uh, at the same time, you know, I think you need game time together too. And, uh, you know, when it's a new manager looking for a new team and you get hit with uh, one very early, then, you know, it's got to knock you back a little bit. And it seems they have done that to the Spaniards. The only three to survive from the Norway game are the goalkeeper Kepa, Rodri and Marino. The rest has all been changed as Spain pick up. There's no foul for Scotland in the centre circle. Long ball, though. He's going to go harmlessly behind for a goal kick despite Jeremy chasing after it. 16 in, 1-0 to the Scots. The Scotland fans not happy because they felt John McGinn should have got a free kick inside the centre circle. He's rubbing the back of his head currently. It's 16, Scotland 1, Spain 0. What price? would you give for that to be the full-time scoreline? It's an Eagle Martinez who's clattered into the back of him. And uh, there was also a possible foul by Marino and Christie around about the same time. The referee, Sandro Scherer, wasn't interested in either. And it's Spain who have it from the long Angus gun goal kick collected there by Toro. He turns it in field for Javid Garcia, who finds Ceballos outside the centre circle we're in the 17th minute Scotland leading and it's Spain on the ball and this is his initially good play from McTominay's won it back and he slipped it forward there to Dykes who goes down fouled by Garcia he's taken it quickly looking for Christie he wasn't getting there but the ref wasn't ready anyway and that's a free kick and Leanne was uh, tapping her desk in appreciation of what Lyndon Dykes did there. Just takes all the pressure away. Brilliant, brilliant work initially from Scott McTominay. Just real composure in the middle of the pitch. Just checks back out of the situation. Keeps the ball under control. No panic, which is exactly what you want. The players around just feed off of that. When they see each other being so calm and, and relaxed in those types of situations. And then, as you mentioned, Dykes just comes and takes the pressure. Uses his body so well as, as he does and draws the foul takes the pressure off Scotland, allows them an opportunity to play forward, get the ball into the, the Spanish opposition half and, and look to play there as much as they possibly can. It's off McTominay, he was out for the throwing on the near side to the Spanish. And Spain's wonderful qualification record, including away games. As I said, they've only lost five European Championship qualifiers since the finals in 1992 that they failed to qualify for. But they have been a little bit vulnerable on the road overall in the last few years. They've drawn with the Czechs in the Nations League that was last year in Switzerland and Germany in the previous edition of that tournament where they also lost in Ukraine and they drew friendlies in the Netherlands and Portugal so they haven't always been winning games when they've been travelling recently as that long ball towards Dykes bounces all the way through to Kepa 18 and a half on the clock Scotland 1 Spain 0 under the lights here on Glasgow's south side Willie Miller yeah, it's very comfortable for uh, Scotland so far anyway and you know the Spaniards are definitely looking a little bit rattled you know some really unforced errors uh, you know giving possession away it's not like them at all putting it out of the park in one occasion as well so I, I don't think Steve Clark could have asked for a better start to the game. You know, teams looking organised, disciplined at the back. They'll go into that back five when they have to. And they've got that goal, that all-important goal, and, you know, an early goal in a game like this. What it does for your confidence, it just sets it sky high. Well, just uh, four or five days ago, Scott McTominay had one goal for his country. He's taken that to four. And that was uh, his little, what was it, 20, 25-minute cameo at the weekend, and... Within a few minutes of 
this one. Scotland have had the lead since the seventh minute. And it's Spain in possession with Jose Lu. First time ball out to that right hand side. Long ball into the box. The cross from Toro is only half away by Porteous. Collected by Gaia. Takes a touch. Swings the ball in. There's a header straight at Angus Gunn. Either side of the goalkeeper. It's probably one apiece. And Jose Lu's holding his head in his hands. It stays Scotland 1 Spain. Now 19 and a half minutes in. And that is the Spaniards' best moment in the game. And really, Jose Lu should probably have brought Spain level. Yeah, it's a warning shot, Liam, because it comes, it's almost that switch of play that the Scottish midfielder stretched, as I mentioned, that might happen, and as Portes clears the ball to the edge of the box, there was no blue jerseys to pick up the second ball, and it comes in, it's a really dangerous cross. Possibly probably should do better, Angus Gunn, it comes straight at him in the middle of the, the Scotland goal. But it is that warning shot, as I mentioned. That's a big chance, isn't it? You, you, you'd expect them from that range to get it either side mm -hmm. of the goalkeeper. You know, he wasn't under pressure. You know, he was in between two centre backs there, and he was well above them. And it's right in the forehead as well. He's got his head, his hand, and his head, and he knows that's a big chance. It's went a uh, begging, and we've we've survived it. That's for sure. Yeah, there'll be a few more of them. I would have thought. An old biting night. It is Rodri's cushion header onto the halfway line for Marino. He slides, finds Poro right at the centre circle. Back to Garcia. He plays it to Martinez and out to this near side for Gaia. Gets it into his stride. Moving forward, about midway inside the Scotland half now. Out to Oyarzabal on this left flank for the Spaniards. Infield to Ceballos, which is it out to the right for Pedro Poro. Level with the edge of the D of the Scotland box onto the touchline on the far side for Jeremy. And back into the midfield it comes for Martinez. Forward to Rodri, shrill whistles from the Scotland supporters. Ceballos, forward to Yazabal at the edge of the D. He runs into a cul-de-sac. McTominay wins it back, goes back to his keeper. And he dumps it clear as Angus Gunn up towards the halfway line. But it's met cushion head art by Inigo Martinez. And again, all over it as well down there as he puts it out for a Spanish throw-in, but he just wasn't giving Danny Ceballos any kind of time on the ball whatsoever. We're 21 and a half minutes into this one. Match day two, Group A, Euro 2024 qualifier. Scotland leading the top seed, Spain, by a Scott McTominay goal to nil as the Scots get a free kick on the halfway line for a foul down there by Hosselu. It's a throw-in, isn't it? It's a, it's a foul you, throw never, <laughs> you never see that in a game, do you? When was the last time? You saw a referee given uh, very, a very, 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 yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It was, by the way. It was, it was terrible. <laughs> the worst, probably one of the worst techniques you'll see. <laughs> almost, he was almost yeah. doubled over. Almost a quarter of the way through this. Spain have it back with their goalkeeper, Kepa. Hits it first time with a left foot up towards halfway. Hosselu wants a free kick. Felt he was being impeded by Hanley. I think he's decided to volley it all the way back to Angus Gunn. He takes a good touch and then slices it the second attempt there. Not sure what was going through Hickey's mind. At least Gunn's found touch out for a throw into Spain level with the Scotland six yard line. No, and you can tell that Angus Gunn's fairly new in this team because I think there would be many other goalkeepers that if they had received that type of pass, they might have had a bit more to say about it, Liam, but he, he lets Aaron Hickey off the hook. There's Spain who could still punish it. Guy has left it for Ceballos, left hand side of the box, a delicate ball in, Hosselu should have got something onto it, in the end gets nothing, Scotland get it half away, important moments in the game, a quarter of the way into it, in comes the cross, Hosselu headed off the bar, he's in three chances in the last few minutes, he's spurned all of them, as Scotland come away in the counter with McGinn down this near side, well, Hosselu's header found the crossbar of Angus Gunn's goal frame and I mean that is just an inch or so away from drawing the Spaniards back on level terms it stays 1-0 though well it's a warning isn't it uh, you, you know you've got to get close to him he's certainly you know a real target and a real danger uh, from the cross balls uh, we heard before the game that uh, that's the way Spain like to play and, and the cross balls have been put in hasn't been defended they haven't been defended uh, particularly well and we're a little bit fortunate not to find uh, ourselves back in level terms with the Spaniards because as you said Liam three opportunities uh, and none of them taken well the Scotland fans in the north stand are claiming that Pedro Porro tried to pick the ball up for a throw in when it hadn't gone out and uh, Ryan Christie was protesting as well and he's being spoken to by referee Scherer be a Spanish throw in midway inside the Scotland half over on their right hand side as they attack the goal to the left and boy have they been doing that in the last few minutes Scotland leading a bit of a charmed life all of a sudden Hickey 
picks up the scraps, finds Portis, he goes back to his keeper and Gunn puts it up high towards halfway. Dykes wins the header, how often have we said that in Scotland international matches? He couldn't find a teammate though, and Ceballos switches it left to right at the centre circle for Poro. Now with Rodri, to his left for Ceballos, now to Poro again, who's the man who the Scotland fans felt handed the ball before it went out. You can tell, there's Ceballos now collecting it, bang in the middle of the pitch here, right-footed, looking to slip it out to that far side, and Robertson read the danger, and he puts it out, and then the enemy Pino's gone down, clutching his face here, Andy Robertson is saying he's making the most of whatever this is, now if there's anything in it, the VAR will tell us, but Jeremy Pino's dropped to the deck, rolling around, clutching his face, the Scotland players are trying to get him to stand up, and we're seeing a replay of it now, Robertson, it's his shoulder, I think, that has caught Jeremy, and the referee will be taking on advisement from the video assistant. Big moment coming up here, 25 in, Scotland leading 1-0. Nothing for Helium, looking at it, I think Andy Robertson, he almost nudges into the player. He's... Yeah. Listen, there's that, no that contact can be in his face really for me I think when you look at it there's certainly contact in the body but he's going down yeah. and rolling his about and holding his face as if he's been punched I agree with you I agree there's with you. absolutely I think, minimal contact I, I at think, best it's a disgrace I think he's overreacting to the situation but see when that slowed down Leanne and somebody's watching it yeah. you know up top it's, it's, it's his motion towards his chin with his, his arm his elbow it's going to create, I think they well, might give we'll that go. yeah on you go I'm in agreement with you, Willie. I mean, I think he makes a definite movement with his, with the top of his arm and his shoulder into the player's face, and and there's enough in that for me for, for him. I think they could be in trouble here. Yeah. I know. I know he goes down and he rolls him yeah. out and all the rest of it, but Robertson didn't need to do that, you know. He, he didn't. This interpretation of I think now with the match officials. Yeah. The yeah. player continues his movement towards Robertson, though. The two players come together. I so hope if you're he right, doesn't Leanne. walk towards Robertson, then Rob, there would be no need for Robertson to push him off. And yeah. I think he almost makes it as if get off me. Yeah. Like, don't don't come towards me and gives him that wee nudge. And of course his shoulder's going to move. But I'm telling you right now, slow that down as much as you want. There is minimal contact at best in that player's face and he's rolling about like he's gone 12 rounds I think we all, with I think we, all agree, we all agree that, that, he's, that he's definitely made the most of it, that's for sure. But I think Robertson makes a definite move to move Cards his shoulder. Cards, it's face. yellow. And uh, I was saying it was Jeremy looking at the replays. It's Why is it yellow? Pedro Porro. Robertson's been booked. And Spain have a throw-in, so it's not even a free kick, so if it's not a foul, why is it a yellow card? Exactly. Because the VAR can't decide to issue yellows. Anyway, well, that's good news for us. Oh, isn't it just? And Leanne was right. So, so the referee's not made the decision, he doesn't yellow card them because he doesn't see the foul, so VAR is basically referee in this game of football. Here comes Spain, though, down the right-hand side, it's pulled back, and Porteous is in the right place. Up into the air, it's still inside the box, down by the byline. Hosselu brushes Tierney off the ball, and he eventually goes behind for a Spanish corner. Scotland still leading 1-0, 27 and a half in. And the only punishment so far, after a couple of close shaves, is a yellow card for Robertson. So take it as a yellow card for his action towards a winger, yeah? But the, the, yeah, well, but but the, ref, the referee's not made that decision. Sorry, let me cut over yeah, right. No, 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 it, you're right. I mean, VAR's not... It's here for game-changing moments. That's what it's here for. Okay. And not to decide yellow cards. No. In comes the corners, a header just over from Rodri. He was at the right angle of the six-yard box and he ripples the roof of the net and it stays after 28 and a half, just about. Scotland won Spain nil. The it's been a difficult five, ten minutes, this though. The deliveries are wild, Willie, really, aren't they? Yeah. They're so good. Yeah. So difficult to defend against and if Spain are going to get themselves level and cause problems in this game, it's exactly where it's going to come from. It's another huge opportunity. And we're not picking him up either. I mean, he's, he's a huge figure there. You've got yeah. to get someone on him. You've it's got the quality they're unknown, um, isn't up. it? The, the pace yeah. and the ball and but, the delivery. Rodri six you foot know, three. You're not missing him. What, what's, what, what's happened to all that wrestling and getting close to players in the box? Yeah. I mean, what is that now? Four headers, four headers. I think. Yeah, we've just yeah. had a yellow card dished for. Yeah, and here come the Spaniards again. Hosselu out to that right hand side. The smell blood here. Pedro Poro's on it again. He goes for goal and Gunn is to tip it over. He's 25 yards from goal. There is Poro. 
whose error led to the Scotland goal. He's tested the fingertips of Gunn and Spain of another corner as we approach the half hour. Scotland still leading 1-0, but they're quaking a little bit here. They are, and they've got to ride this storm just now. There's quality and there's real variety to the Spanish attack just now, whether it's shots from distance. Well, here's the ball with the in-swinging corner. The header down and away by Hickey. Then on the half volley, it's last over the bar by Yerini. And Scotland survived that. And it stays Scotland 1, Spain 0. But yes. the last 10, 15 minutes, Willie, have oh, been extremely yeah. difficult for this home side. Yeah, I mean, basically, the, the defence has been peppered. And, you know, the deliveries from the wide area are, are, are really telling. But I still think that our defence has been found wanting a little bit, not getting close enough to players, particularly, you know, tall physical players. You've got to make sure that you're picking them up, and they haven't done that yet, so we have uh, road work quite considerably, I think, in that last ten minutes, Liam. Yeah, falling out of the game, they really have. Now, a lot of that's down to what the Spanish are doing, but Scotland off it just at the moment, still have their lead intact, though. That's the most important thing, as it's collected here by David Garcia. Playing it short to Merino. Now to Toro, you don't need, need me to even name check him. And as, uh, it comes back to Merino and then into the centre circle for Garcia. Rolls it along the halfway line for Martinez. Back to Garcia. Across the halfway line. And out to the right for Merino. Looks forward. It's another one of those long clip balls into the box. Hossel, who's got there first. Goalkeepers come away from his goal line. They forced it wide right though, it's Poro, cross ball in, headed clear by Hanley. Scotland can't get a touch right now, it's all Spain as it's played back into the box and then Hanley heads clear again. Picked up by Ceballos on this near side, being put under all kinds of pressure by McGinn. And then out of play it goes for a throw in on the near side, I think McGinn's going to be penalised for a foul on Martinez there, just before the Spanish player put it out for the throw and McGinn putting the pressure on and Igor Martinez felt the full force of the Scotland number seven there yeah, he's just trying to get his team up the pitch the momentum certainly takes him through and connects with the player I don't think you can have too many complaints about that one but it's the tenacity of John McGinn he can feel his sides under pressure and he's just looking to try and give them that outlet certainly not coming anytime soon I don't think no 32 minutes just about played here. Ceballos running forward, slipping it into the box. It's Hosselu on the turn. He's managed to find his teammate, but the referee blows the whistle. And that's going to be a Scotland free kick inside their own box. I'm not sure what the possession stats are for the last 15 minutes. For the game as a whole, it's 63-37 in the visitors' favour. But it's felt about 80 to 90 in the last 10, 15 minutes of this. Yeah, it's been really have taken a, a grip of the game. The majority of it's been played in the, the Scotland defensive half. And I think when you look at the game, you would have probably quartered it up but from a Scotland perspective, get through the first 20-odd minutes, see how much you can get out of it, what you can squeeze out of it, stay compact. They took the early lead, which was brilliant. It's the second 20-odd minutes. Do we get to half-time now that you're going to need to weather the storm? Yeah, Spain have it with Gaia. A bit level with the edge of the D in his own half as he pulls it back into his own box and then... A sliced clearance up towards halfway. Hickey gets his head onto it ahead of Oryarzabal. And then Hickey loses it. Oryarzabal's the meat and the sandwich. And Hickey is foul. Free kick Scotland. And that will do very nicely right now. Thank you very much on the halfway line. Scotland 1, Spain 0. 33 played here on Sports Sound, BBC Radio Scotland. On digital, on the radio frequencies, on sounds. BBC Radio Scotland next at bbc.co.uk slash sports Scotland. Match day two, Group A in the Euro 2024 qualifiers. Scotland leading Spain, but they've been leading a charmed life in the last period of the match. Yeah, they, they need a bit of respite, don't they? They need to, you know, in some way, get the ball up to Dykes and then get support up to him. Oh, brilliant header by Dykes. Well, Dykes is going to be booked here. Yeah, yellow card. He's leapt up there with the defender, he's won the header, but the ref obviously feels he's struck the Spanish player with his arm. And it's he and David Garcia have gone up for it. And the elbow certainly caught Garcia. But is it yellow card worthy? Because Dykes has got his eyes on the ball the whole time. Liam, well, I'm looking at it, and I don't know if there's too much difference between the one earlier on with John McGinn. They get caught in the back of his head. Two players going up to compete for a header. You know, you look at the height of Dykes and... 
he's elevated to win the header it's just the reaction of the Spanish players for me that's mind blown at times the problem is as well here is that, that when, that's a big part of Lyndon Dykes yeah. game he does yeah. that again he's gone yeah I mean, the thing is, when you jump for a ball as well, I, I, I'm with you, Leon. I mean, it's a, it's a big, strong centre forward against a centre back. Mm -hmm. And things like that are going to happen. You've got to use your arms to get you the, the purchase to get up there and win the header in the first place. Um, but only all too often we see yellow cards being given for something that uh, looks pretty straightforward. Good challenge in my book. Yeah, and that's a good one from Christie. He's got it back left hand side. The Spain box looks up at the area, gets the cross ends to the back post. The two in navy blue have come to the near post. Picked up by Spain on the near side by Oyarzabal, gets there ahead of Hickey. And that's with Ceballos. The Real Madrid man rolls it into the penalty area for Rodri. Scotland win it back. No, here's McTominay. It was won back by Christie. McTominay, a little ball into the area. He almost managed to find Ryan Christie on the six yard line. He was behind for the corner. I think it was Robertson actually won it back initially. As McTominay made his way into the box, fancying another goal as the big Manchester United midfielder as he clipped it in looking for Christie couldn't quite find him corner only superb play from Andy Robertson because he steps into an area that if he doesn't get there he finds himself in no man's land but he does a brilliant job for the team squeezes locks on in the press allows McTominay to go and take the positive touch and, and deliver it into the box and these are the types of moments Scotland will want to pose a huge threat from yeah I kind of feel they're going to need a second goal mm -hmm. tonight McGinn waiting to take this corner in Swinger with a left boot down on this near side in the southeast corner off to our right hands on hips the referee just sorting things out inside the box a very congested six yard area there's a couple of players gone down Tierney has gone down he's looking at the referee he's just I think encouraging him back to his feet there he was being challenged by Oyarzabal the ref telling him to get on with it Tierney again goes down Bounces straight back up this thing. He's still looking at the ref. McGinn takes the corner into the near post. He's headed behind for another one. Second corner in quick succession. Possillo putting it behind. And Tierney's now going to Sandra Scherer, the referee, to make the point he's being held by Oyarzabal. It's falling on deaf ears, though. <laughs> McGinn has a second chance from this corner. Scotland leading 1-0, 36 and a half on the clock, and it comes on top of the keeper. Kepa punches it up high, way more height than distance though. It's bouncing around inside the area. Gaia can't get much on it. Here's McGinn, right hand side of the box, runs into trouble, goes down. That's surely a free kick. McGinn's gone down. Referee says no. Hickey crosses in anyway. Spain get it half away, and then the whistle goes, and it's to the Spaniards' benefit for a foul <laughs> on uh, one of their defenders. I think it's Garcia. I tell you what, it's not easy for that referee. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of collisions going on inside the box. A lot of players going down as well. I mean, it's meaty stuff. It's exciting. It's entertaining. That's for sure. Glad you're enjoying yourself. Really. <laughs> so just over 37 in Scotland, leading Spain by one goal to nil. Remember earlier in Batumi, it was Georgia one, Norway one. A big boost for the Scots that coming into this one. Here's Pedro Poro wide in the right, midway inside the Scotland half. Short ball infield to Marino, back to Poro, and he sweeps it back into his own half, low to David Garcia, who finds Martinez just inside the centre circle. Now he's just inside the Scotland half. It's uh, Jose Gaia trying to offer him an option out in the near side. Instead, he plays the simple ball to Garcia. Now it's with Marino, and then to Martinez. Nico Martinez cap number 20 for the Real Sociedad player is that bent out by Rodri to Poro on the far side and Tierney with a challenge and he slides in and puts it into the north stand on the far side 38 on the clock, Scotland won Spain nil it's a, it's a good shape defensively that Scotland have mm -hmm. got but that wide area you know that that is area that uh, I think is causing most Here's good concern. Possilou inside the box, he got onto the ball he's gone down, he's thrown himself to the deck looking for a penalty I think as the referee buying this they'll, che they'll so. check it Liam absolutely they'll check it Hosselu went down he's claimed he was bundled illegally to the deck and that Spain should have a penalty here yeah, I think it was Grant Hanley wasn't it <laughs> nothing for me no. the ball's already gone yeah. Craig Levine shaking his head as well and there's no penalty to be fair Liam I, I wish in these instances that there would be action taken 
for simulation because the player is clearly claiming for a penalty and there's He's nothing himself down. there's nothing at all happened it's the one bit of the game that drives me insane because this will happen umpteen times tonight we've been to double figures the amount of instances that we look at where players are offering simulation and trying to con the referee and nothing will be done about it Dykes wins yet another header can't find a teammate though and it's Poro it's right hand side of the centre circle well, approaching the final five minutes of the first half here we a good few minutes added on at the end as well what an eventful night it's been so far Scott McTominay giving Scotland the lead on seven minutes a lead they've enjoyed ever since Spain have had chances though most notably from Hosselu Rodri as well as uh, Dykes loses the ball under pressure from Garcia no free kick here's Ceballos for Spain right of the centre circle slipping it to Poro looks up low ball on the turns Merino draws Tierney out from his position away from Christie as well as he rolls it out to Poro wide on the right again and it's in the middle of the pitch with Ceballos he's found Rodri or he has a ball ahead of him instead he turns it out to the left hand side with Gaia his cross is blocked though and it's John McGinn fouled by Ceballos that's brilliant from John McGinn knew the challenge was coming wins the free kick takes the pressure off 40 on the clock Scotland 1 Spain 0 yeah hops back up on his feet Liam and gets on with the game <laughs> exactly what you should do but it's brilliant uses his body so well knows exactly when the pressure is coming works the challenge takes the pressure off his side Scotland just need to get themselves in at half time I think Willie mentioned there the defensive shape in the last probably six or seven minutes has been much better flat back five four across the midfield and Lyndon Dykes at times just dropping in there and offering that little bit extra support to the midfield but they're covering the width of the pitch much better and they're able to shut off centrally as well to stop those intricate passes breaking the lines really good it's just getting themselves up the park it is, though, isn't it it? Is. that's yeah. a big issue that's got to be uh, solved and hopefully it can be solved in the second half it's a huge problem for them right now because here comes Spain again with Gaia drive down the left he's on a pose right now Hickey comes to meet him he's down to the byline Hickey gets the touch and it's come off the Spaniard last yep goal kick 41 played I should say at this point as well Scotland have had a couple of yellows Robertson and Dykes did a bit of checking and they've increased the number of yellows he'd allowed before a suspension so you can now accumulate three yellows in three separate matches before you're booked previously it was two which in a 10 game group this is an eight game group but in a 10 game group it's ridiculous when you consider that uh, UEFA Champions League Europa League Europa Conference League campaigns which are six matches long that's three yellows so finally common sense prevails in the qualifiers down the right hand side goes Pedro Porro he goes across halfway Scotland desperate to get to half time here's Jeremy low ball back to Marino knocks it forward to Rodri he does well he's danced away from a few there he's such a, a good player Rodri as it's clipped out to the left hand side for Gaia looks up at the Scotland box thought about the cross elects to turn and move it back the way to Marino again it's all over him and he puts the challenge in you can hear it in the background and it's out for a Spain throw in level with the Scottish 18 yard line on this near side taken quickly by Gaia Marino has managed to force it back here to Rodri 42 and a half on the clock Scotland one nothing up it's now with Ceballos Scotland forcing them back a little bit picked up though by David Garcia who moves it right to left of the circle for Martinez short low ball forward there to Yarsabal and he's got that wrong as he dinks it back into his own half Ceballos is to backtrack he prevents it from going out for the throw in but he's had to pass it back to his goalkeeper and Kepa has it just outside the box two minutes left of the 45 you certainly take that don't you you know forcing the Spaniards right back uh, you know to just outside their own box at this stage of the game in the first half um, you know I think foul. Steve Clark will be more than delighted with the performance so far fell by Hanley free kick as he brought Hosselu down he was touch tight with him Hosselu's had his chances hit the bar tonight I was trying to I haven't managed to have a close look at a replay I'm just wondering if Angus Gunn's got the slightest touch on the effort from Hosselu which hit the bar maybe Richard will have a better idea anyway here comes Spain down the right with Toro dancing into the box he's gone down and he's found a teammate as it slipped back to the edge of the penalty area Marino bends the ball in he goes right through to gun once again hosselu has gone down claiming penalty when it's not given like a petulant toddler he turns onto his stomach and starts beating the turf in annoyance 
as we approach 44 minutes. Scotland won, Spain nil. The Spaniards have certainly brought the theatrics with them tonight. They're having. It didn't look as though there was uh, any contact at all there. Um, you know, we're seeing it again. Uh, it doesn't look like, uh, you know, a jersey tug at all. But it just throws itself to the ground. You know, the temperament, the temperamental Spanish players are, uh, you, you know, trying to seek that advantage. But the referee is seeing through them. A yellow card would sort it out, Willie, I yeah. think. Yeah. And then Craig Levine reckons he spotted a jersey pool in the midst of all that one there. So they haven't checked it back, or at least... We're not entirely sure whether that's going on in the background as an official penalty check. But anyway, Craig seems adamant, having had a chance to study the replay. Anyway, Scotland up the other end, the throw-in from Hickey into the box is cleared by Rodri. Porteous gets his head to it, he's gone down, and once more Hosselu's on the deck down there. Luke checking for blood while play rages on. As it's collected by David Garcia inside his own box, short to Porro. He's managed to knock it forward to Marino. He's got a bit of Hamden Park to eat up here as he comes forward, rolls it down that right-hand side. Tierney comes to meet Jeremy. Really good challenge by Kieran Tierney. Great first touch by Christie. Two minutes of stoppage time have been added into the first of those. Scotland go back the way to Robertson and then to Angus Gunn. Just two more minutes. You can get in at half-time, take a breather with a lead. As uh, Christie clips Jeremy over on the far side, Spanish free kick right on the halfway line over on the Spain right. Scotland won Spain nil as we knock on half time. It's such a crucial time as well in the game, isn't it? You, you know, to make sure that that shape is kept and it's been superb so far defensively. And, you know, you get that early lead and obviously Steve Clark's uh, been working on it. If you can get the lead, then this is the shape that you're going to employ and it's working a treat. Spain in possession to the right-hand side in first half stoppage time. It is the Spaniards in possession just left to the centre circle with Martinez. We're almost at the end of the first of the two that were added. Ariar Sabal's finds Ceballos as they get closer to the Scotland box. Ceballos has got options to his right. Toro's going to get it here. He's inside the box, right-hand side of it, level with the penalty spot, pulls it back, blocked by McGregor. Ryan Christie slips it out to Robertson. He just boots it away and Dykes will give chase now. Linda Dykes driving forward. He's in behind the defence. Linda Dykes is in. No, oh, he's lifting it over. Hamden Park collectively lets out a groan as Lyndon Dykes saw the whites of Kepa's eyes. But he didn't have the finesse in the end. What an opportunity it was. One on one with the keeper in the second of two minutes of first half stoppage time. And it will stay Scotland 1, Spain 0. Oh, it's a huge chance, isn't it? He just can't get his legs sorted out there at the end. He, he just needs to get the little dink over the goalkeeper and he hits it just too much on it and it goes over the bar. But a magnificent run. And was it Tierney that played the pass as well? I think it was Tierney. Here comes Spain up the other end, though. Closing seconds. It's Ceballos. Scotland trying to get back into position. The cross is poor. And it sails well wide. It was Hosselu. That sums up his first half. It's the half-time whistle goes here. If only it were full time. hosselu has got the bottom, the front of his shirt in his mouth as he ponders what's just gone on in those opening 47 minutes as it ended up being. He's been the man with the chances, the man who got the two against the Norwegians in Malaga on Saturday. The closest he came, he hit the bar. Not sure if Gunn got a touch or not, but he's hit the bar. And that was a period of the game where Scotland were getting away with it a little bit. There was the lengthy VAR check to see if Andy Robertson deserved a red. The Swiss referee gave him a yellow. I have to say, I don't think you can issue yellows off the back of VAR guidance, but that's what the referee did. Robertson was booked, Dykes was booked for an elbow. But Scotland have the lead, all thanks to Scott McTominay, who scored twice in the 3-0 win over Cyprus here in Glasgow on Saturday. Well, he was at it again, seven minutes on the clock, just about, when his deflected effort went past Kepa to give Scotland a priceless lead here against the top seeds in Group A. And make no mistake, if Scotland win this game tonight, Euro 2024 could well be beckoning. The top two, remember, automatically qualify. And Norway and Georgia spilled points in Batumi earlier. Are the stars aligning here under the lights on Glasgow's south side at Hampden Park? But at half time, it is Scotland 1, Spain 0. Scotland in the Euro 2024 qualifiers. This is Sports Sound from BBC Radio Scotland. 
What a 45 minutes at the National Stadium, Scotland in front, but only just after a period of concerted pressure from the Spanish, which seemed to last for about 20, 25 minutes. And what an opportunity for Lyndon Dykes right at the end of the half. And he went and just uh, chipped it over Kepa and over the crossbar. Um, we're living in our nerves a little bit, Craig Levine, but um, that's been OK, hasn't it? <laughs> living on our nerves I don't know I mean it's been so exciting it seems like four and a half minutes you know it's been incredible not 45 minutes I mean it's a it's a, an unusual type of match uh, for me Richard the Spanish have thrown a lot of crosses into the box it's not something that you would normally associate with them but I mean Jocelyn's caused all sorts of problems I mean he's got his head on three good crosses into the box and he should have probably done better for a couple of them um, and we just need to be careful, you know, that, that we don't get involved in a in a, a fight, you know, as Porteous as at times wants to, to get involved in, in fighting Jocelyn. Jocelyn at this minute in time is probably a little bit stronger than him, you know, that's the one that the, the, the header that, uh, that hit the bar. I think the yeah. Porteous just tried to block him and he was too strong for him. Um, and I can't remember if, if the very last um, situation there with the, the, had a look at the... the well, we were looking at the jersey pool. I don't know if it was Porteous or, or if it was Hanley. I wasn't 100% sure, but there was definitely a definite handful of the front of the of the shirt, and uh, that could have been a really dangerous situation for us. So the last thing we want to do is give them something. We have, to, we have to make them work to get anything, and the last thing we afford to do is do something silly, whether it be you know somebody getting a second booking and getting sent off, or whether it may be you know giving away a, a, a penalty in a, in a situation which isn't. Deep, I wouldn't deem to be necessary so I, I love the way that we're playing we, we understood that, that the Spanish were going to have more of the ball of course they have we, but we're, we're snapping into tackles we're running as hard as we possibly can and the, the thing about the, the Dykes chance at the end there it just gives the players encouragement that it's still worth trying to get forward to support you know because you know, the longer this game goes, if the Spanish do throw more, more players forward, then I think the counter-attack counter attack's really, really on for us. So, listen, I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, it's been such an electric atmosphere in here. Everybody's so hyper. I mean, the, the, the referee's getting barracked at every <laughs> occasion. The wee right back for, for Spain, every time Porro. he touches the ball, yeah. Porro, he's getting absolutely, uh, you know, there's howls from the, the supporters. So, it's... Uh, Everybody's fully engaged, trust me, and it's a, it's a wonderful atmosphere. Yeah, it's a wonderful atmosphere. It's a wonderful scoreline right now, Tom. Um, overall, <laughs> in terms of the flow of the play, I guess it's been pretty much what we might have anticipated, uh, other than perhaps Scotland being in front. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been an extraordinary game of football. There's been so... It's like about five games of football in, in one 45-minute spell. The amount of incidents, the amount of uh, aggravation out there, the goal, the one off the crossbar, other chances, point-blank headers for Jocelyn. Jocelyn's become the pantomime baddie of the night. Um, Dykes could well have scored. Uh, I mean, he gets away from Garcia, doesn't he? We know he's, we know, we know he's, got, the, he's got the pace on him. Uh, there's so much happening out there. There's, there's a li loads, loads of niggles. The fans are um, really engaged with it. It's a, it's a fantastic, fantastic, madcap game of football. And, and you know, I mean, there's the Robertson one. Uh, I think he should, I think he should be off the pitch. Yeah. I think it's a red card. I think it's an elbow. It's a needless, needless elbow um, to the chin, neck. Uh, and it's it's a red card. You can't do that. He, he can't do it. He definitely moves the elbow. There's no question about that. He moves it. He motions it towards the player. He does. does he actually catch him that high up? And he certainly doesn't catch him in the face. No, he doesn't catch him in the face. Has catch gone him in down. The, catch him in the neck, chin. Yeah. And that's enough. You can't do that. It's a red card. I think he was I think very, very, very that, lucky. Yeah. Had that been an opposition player, we'd have expected a red card, wouldn't we? You would, absolutely. If, that, right. if that's a game of rugby, he's off the pitch. No, there's no questions asked. There would be no debate. Yeah, you can't. You, you don't can't. get sent off for that in rugby, do you? Yeah, absolutely. It would be a cast iron, no debate, red card in rugby. What's El happened to that game that you love so elbow, much, Tom? Elbow to the <laughs> elbow to the neck chain because they're very hot on this. Understandably, 
any any contact with that area, it's a red card. I think Robertson is really lucky. I can't quite understand how he's got a yellow. No. I mean, if 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 the referee has deemed it uh, an elbow to that area, it's a red card. It's not a yellow card. So I, I don't know how he's come up with that one. Well, I mean, clearly the VAR offers it up as well. VAR checks because it's a potential red card. He's obviously been told that it's it's not a red card, but there is some kind of offence there, and therefore it's a yellow card offence. Well, if if an, <laughs> if an elbow to the <laughs> chin neck is a yellow card, that's a new one on me. Yeah. Okay. And, um, it's, uh, and it's different to the Dykes one. Dykes gets a yellow card. He's, his elbow does uh, uh, make contact with the face, but that's yeah. that's a, that's competing for the ball. Right? Yeah, that's the I, two of them honest competing for the ball he does catch him it's a yellow card I think that's fair enough the Robertson one was stupid I don't know what he's doing there no 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 Dykes and, and that was a justified yellow card there's no question that he, he deserved it for that what has been frustrating and it's in some ways really disappointing to see from a, a Spanish team that we enjoyed watching and playing the kind of football they did for so many years the histrionics the diving the play acting is um, it's just an embarrassment isn't it there's a lot of it going on uh, Jocelyn is uh, is really at it, um, <laughs> and I don't think he's I don't think his mood is going to lighten any uh, for not getting a penalty, which I think he was a bit unfortunate not to get. I think it was definitely jersey pull. Um, be interesting to see if you see it on the replay at half time, Richard. We'd love to see who who what Scotland player was it, um, but it looked it looked like a it looked like a jersey pull to me. I think Scotland got away with that one. Um, but yeah, this, they're they are throwing themselves around the place. There's a two or three of them at it. Um, but it just shows. It, it, this is all. This adds to the spectacle of it. I know it's not great to see, but it it it's it just makes this game completely absorbable. The fact that they are doing this, they're feeling they have to do this because they're in a bit of trouble here, Spain. I know they've had chances, but they're one nil down. Christie had a good chance. Dykes had a good chance. Um, Spain are now forcing the game. They're, they're susceptible to a counter attack. They know that Dykes has the pace in Garcia. Um, it's, oh, this is, I mean, it couldn't be any more exciting. Yeah, and as Craig said um, earlier, the, the remarkable thing is to see a Spanish team firing in crosses. It was it was it was illegal almost for um, some of those Spanish players. Yeah, this is the difference, to, isn't it? Yeah, totally. This is, this is this is this isn't this isn't Spain aren't, aren't trying to kill you with with, with passing anymore in possession. Um, under De La Fuente, they get it wide, they get crosses in early, and they put in some brilliant crosses, haven't they? Um, it's a, it's a different it's a different style of play completely, but they're losing, and uh, Hamden is raucous, Spain are narky, and we're loving it. <laughs> so from Steve Clark's point of view, Craig, he just sends his players out there and tells them to do same in the first uh, as in the first 45 minutes. Yeah, but 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 be very careful about any challenges that you're making because obviously. The more often the Spanish players throw themselves to the ground and ride about on the ground and they, they get at the referee, he will give a decision at some point against... But that's where VAR should come into play then. Yeah, but... We, the, we the, all know the referees have been swayed like that in the past, but yeah. it, it should always be corrected, shouldn't it? No, no, but I mean, there are situations where, you know, maybe there is a situation where Dykes goes up again for another header, you know, and it's catched somebody on the shoulder. Now... You know, the referee might look at that and think it's dangerous and, and send them off. You know, and, and, and for me, that's not sending off. So, and, and there's loads of situations in games where, where, that can happen where a referee will take a glance at it and think, nah, there's nothing in that. But as it builds up and builds up and builds up and builds up, and, and the, all the Spanish players keep haranguing them and haranguing them and haranguing them every time that happens, it's human nature at times just to let something or to give a decision. So we have to be on our guard and be very, very careful in the penalty box about doing absolutely anything at all that might bring the attention of our. So, sorry, I think I lost you there, Craig. Just, just that was to, very good anyway. It well, you seem to matter. disappear. You seem to disappear halfway through a sentence. Um, no, you, no. You're, not, you're not looking at any changes at this point, are you? For who, Scotland? Who, no, 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 no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think there'd be any changes at this, this point in time. Um, 
I don't know what he, I don't know what his strategy and the, the substitutions will be for this game. You know, I think we had an idea on Saturday, you know, what might happen um, and how the things might need to change to to sort of you know up the tempo a little bit and get some more goals. But I think this is slightly more complicated. You know, I don't know. Spanish substitution, not so Carvajal is coming on. All right, so, so you know, means... full back for full back. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't. You know, this is this is developing in, and I hope I'm, I won't be eating my words, but this is definitely developing into an I was there, not kind of night. Um, because the first half, it's it's one of the most enjoyable halves of football I've seen in a long time, certainly international football. Because it was, it was just, it was, a, it was a bit of everything. Wasn't there's it? a rawness about it, isn't there's there? A, yeah, absolutely. There's yeah. an edge, there's an edge yeah. to it. Yeah. There's a passion to it. There's a physicality to it. Uh, it's two teams that are fighting hard, fighting hard. Liam says there's a second substitution as well. There is indeed. Well, we'll get those confirmed for you uh, as soon as we've got the numbers there lined up. Nothing for Scotland, so the same 11 going out, and uh, they are hoping that they are halfway towards what would be one of the more memorable results achieved by a Scotland national team in decades. Remember the highlights tonight, and uh, as things stand, are certainly going to be worth watching. You'll be able to see extended highlights from Hamden, 14 tonight, 10.40 on BBC One. Scotland, uh, a long, long way to go in this. The early goal from Scott McTominay took a deflection of Martinez, but it was enough to ensure that uh, Scotland had that early advantage. They have had to uh, live dangerously. They've come close themselves. Chris Day just wide. Dykes just over. 1-0 for Scotland. Scott McTominay with his fourth international goal for his country those changes um, for Spain it'll be interesting to see if that alters the approach or whether it is simply man for man you can hear the atmosphere in the background they're keeping it uh, pumped up at Hampden Park and uh, no doubt the fans will have enjoyed a bit of a breather as well because it's it's utterly engrossing Craig isn't it you, you cannot take your eyes off that pitch for a minute no and it's been played with a passion and intensity that's it's not seen that often these days, you know. It's, it's quite refreshing, actually, to watch a game where everybody's just all in, you know, all in, and uh, every challenge. That, and, and even if, the, the, you know, the, it's not just the challenge, it's the it's the getting after the referee after it. Every single challenge is the same. Somebody's chasing the referee to make a complaint about it. So it just it sort of seems like everybody's just completely focused on winning this match. And I think there's more to come. I think this could be a game that, that uh, brings us more than, than, than what we expect. Not just in goals now, nah, but I expect there'll be a wee mini fight on the pitch at some point, Richard. But I could see that happening in this game because it's very, very tense. It would be a wonderful start to qualifying in Group A for Euro 2024 if Scotland can possibly see this through. 1-0 up thanks to Scott McTominay's early goal. Changes for Spain. No surprise, I think, that Porro is going off to be replaced by the veteran Danny Carvajal. Uh, right back. Another change as well. We'll get that confirmed by Liam as Hamden goes into overdrive. And the fans try to play their part in what could be a very, very special night indeed. Half time, Scotland 1, Spain 0. It's back to our commentary team of Leanne Crichton, Willie Miller, and Liam McLeod. Yeah, Danny Carvajal of Real Madrid, just the five Champions League medals. He has five Champions League titles. And we will get confirmation of the changes down below us just now and uh, the board is just being readied so yeah Carvajal for Porto Nico Williams of Athletic Bilbao is going to come on he's got seven goals this season and he is going to come on for Oryazabal who's uh, worth a goal or two to Spain no matter what level he's played at but the Real Sociedad man replaced by Basque rival Nico Williams who started once and made three appearances from the bench at the World Cup in the winter.
Scotland unchanged. And they'll kick off navy shirts, white shorts, navy socks, right to left. Callum McGregor with the first touch. Rolls it back to Tierney. Spain all in red with the gold flashes, as you would expect. And it's up towards Dykes, who heads it in field. McGinn will give chase, but it will be an early second half feel of the ball for Carvajal, who we saw face Celtic in the Champions League this season with his club side, the reigning European club champions. Spain in possession over on the far side. Scott line up gunning goal. Porteous, Hanley, Tierney, Hickey and Robertson wing backs. McTominay and McGregor with McGinn and Christie behind Dykes. For Spain, Kepler and goal. Carvajal, Garcia, Martinez and Gaia. Marino and Rodri. William Ceballos and Jeremy with Fosilu up front. What a 45 minutes this is going to be. Scotland leading 1 0. And as it stands. What a priceless three points it would be. Here's Williams, though, for Spain, down the right-hand side. Blocked by Robertson. New threat for Andy Robertson to deal with in this second half. Jeremy's gone to the other side. Here's Rodri, the edge of the box. He shoots and gun holds on. He has eyes on it. Now he's got his gloves on it. 46 in the clock. Scotland won Spain nil. But that's a signal of intent from the three-time European champions, if ever there was one. An early second half shot on target from Manchester City's Rodri. It is, and it's perhaps a message that we sent at half-time, Liam, is that you know Spain, they need to produce more efforts from in and around the, the Scotland penalty area. It might not be that perfect goal, and it's just that early shot off to test Angus Gunn, but he does well. It comes through bodies. It, it's not a tough save to make, but certainly it's comfortable and one that the goalkeeper will appreciate early on again to get his hands in the ball. I think so, eh? If you're, if, if, if you're wanting a strike early in the second half, then it's one straight at you. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you know, that's what he had to deal with there, and he dealt with it really effectively. Scotland won it back in the midfield. a loose one that time, but it's equally loose from Dykes. He gets it straight back to the visitors. And Jose Gaia on the far side. Forward towards Ceballos. He's going to get it back here from Jeremy. And back to the number six, Inigo Martinez. He switches it to Garcia. Making his debut for Spain tonight, the centre back. Garcia out to this near side for Carvajal. He moves it to the left of the centre circle for Martinez. Pushing it forward there. And a chance for Spain with Jeremy Pino. He's danced away from a couple of challenges, but then his pass is cut out. Scotland have it back with Christie. He's brought crashing to the ground by Marino. And that's going to be a free kick to the Scots midway inside their own half central area. Scotland won Spain nil. 47 and a half on the clock and it could be a slow ticking clock in the second half uh, you, you want to take up as much time as you possibly can and you know Ryan Christie there very intelligent play you know he goes down he is touched uh, does he need to go down as, uh, as hard as he did probably not but at the same time it's you know it's an educated uh, 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 free kick that he gets it allows Angus Gunn to play the long ball up for well, not for Christie, I would suggest. <laughs> and that's exactly what he did. <laughs> Just the wrong man that he played it to. Uh, you know, get it up to Dykes and get uh, up and support him. Dykes has done brilliantly this. Christie raids the first challenge, go down oh. the far side, and he's brought crash into the ground by Gaia. That's going to be a free kick. Might be a yellow as well here for the Valencia fullback. That's definitely a yellow card. Incidentally, I was getting a little bit of clarification on the Robertson yellow in the first half. It appears it was for dissent in the wake of the VAR check for a possible red card. So nothing to do with the actual challenge because we were saying that VAR can't intervene to produce yellow cards. But uh, it appears he said something to the Swiss referee uh, during that. So that's why Robertson was booked. Well, that's reassuring, Liam, yeah. to know that we, we've not just decided tonight yeah. that Barr will <laughs> decide yellow cards. There's a free kick to Scotland. No further punishment for Jose Gaia. But John McGinn's got a chance to take this free kick, which is bang on the touchline, north stand side level with the penalty spot. He sizes up the Spanish defence, the Spanish box. In from McGinn, Tierney's gone down. It's headed away in the six-yard line. Battered for goal by Christie. And it's well wide and it stays Scotland 1, Spain 0 on 49 and a half. That's a few times Tierney's gone down in the box just before a set play's been taken tonight. It's, it, he's getting close attention in there, but I, I think he's given as good as he's, he's getting, actually, you know, because he wants to get close to the opposition player. Um, and they're coming together in the box. And he has went down, what, two or three times now, but the referee not having any of it. It's just one defeat in the last 18 away games in this part of the European Championship for Spain in the qualifying competition 
Their away record is even better in World Cup qualifying matches. Just one defeat in 36 on the road. Scotland are mixing it with a proper team here. No matter who they send out, and they tend to get the job done. And only five minutes into the second half, Scotland leading by one to nothing. And it's Spain in possession. It's flicked to the right-hand side of the centre circle for David Garcia out to Carvajal on this near side. Williams, his fellow sub, gets onto it now. Back to Carvajal. And he rolls it in field to Garcia. Carvajal certainly won't be panicking just now. His club side were two, two goals down to Manchester City in the second leg of a Champions League semi-final last season. So he's helped dig his club side out of a bigger hole than the one they're in in Glasgow tonight. As Carvajal plays it forwards, a poor pass straight to Kieran Tierney. Tierney wins it, now he's getting it into his stride as he runs across halfway. Over on this left-hand side, he's left Carvajal for dead, now he's bounding in towards the box. Tierney plays it across, it's half away, McTominay! It's the stuff of dreams for Scotland! And it's the stuff of dreams for Manchester United, Scott McTominay! Who is suddenly the Tartar Army's magic man! He's just given the Scots proper lift off here! Two goals against the three-time European champions! And as the Tartar Army rub their eyes in disbelief, the scoreline now reads Scotland 2, Spain nil. A historic night awaits here in Glasgow! Oh, it's incredible, Liam, isn't it? I mean, Kieran Tierney, absolutely magnificent down that left-hand side. The cross into the box, not particularly great. Comes off the defender, and there is McTominay, who's burst himself to get into that position. Just gets ahead over the ball with the left foot and drills you. It's a very tight spot that he's picked as well. Bodies round about him too. Ends up in the back of the net. It's quite a magnificent evening. The Tartan Army rubbed their eyes. I think Leanne Crichton rubs her eyes next to him. Unbelievable. The finish is exquisite because he, he does everything right. He gets it on target. He gets a bit of luck. It goes through the legs of the defender. The goalkeeper's probably unsighted. But Kieran Tierney, what a brilliant run down this left-hand side. He draws the defender in so, so well. Spain looking to respond immediately as Robertson clears his lines out for a Spanish throw-in. Big few minutes this one. Scotland now have insurance. They have an insurance policy against the top seeds. And Spain pick up with Marino looking to switch the play out to Gaia over on that left-hand side. Scott McTominay with a goal early in the first half, a goal early in the second half. And we have a quite incredible scoreline at Hamden. Marino prodding it forward. It's cut out and it breaks John McGinn's way. McGinn driving forward, done brilliantly. Across halfway, he burns, rolling it out wide right to Hickey. Scotland on a good counter here. Hickey's held up momentarily as uh, his pass to McGinn is cut out by Marino and out for a Scotland throw in on the far side. They've got some incredible outballs in this team. John McGinn there after Tierney's bombastic run down the left hand side to set up the second goal, which McTominay caught so sweetly. He smashed it into the bottom left corner. And Kepa's just not getting anywhere near it. 53 on the clock. Listen to this place. They say Hamden Park doesn't have an atmosphere. Special night, special days it does. And this is gearing up to be a special night. One of these special nights. Scotland without a win over the Spanish since 1984. They are two to the good here. And it is Spain in possession with Inigo Martinez. Short ball and he gets it back. Switch a play out to this near side for David Garcia. I think De La Fuente is going to look to his bench again here. He's got some serious talent. Alvaro, Marata, Gavi, Inigo Aspas, Borja, Iglesias, he has options. But Scotland have a 2 nothing lead. He'd rather that than the options on the bench, that's for sure. As uh, Spain pick up here with Martinez up towards the edge of the centre circle long ball looking for Williams Tierney's underneath it heads it away little header there from Martinez out to the left hand side goes straight to Hickey's won his team the throw in off Gaia well let's go to Craig Levine because we can scarcely believe what we're seeing here Craig <laughs> well it's incredible isn't it I mean this place is absolutely rocking I mean, it was brilliant play down the left-hand side from, from Kieran Tierney. And just to the point where 
He drew the defender in, looked like he was going to cross it, and he's gone again. And a long bust and run, maybe about 70 yards. He gets them, puts the ball in the box. We do get a bit of good fortune, and it, it bounces back to McTominay. But listen, since he came on the pitch on, on Saturday, no player have, 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 could have had any more impact in any two matches. That's cleared by Kepa. Incidentally, and this escaped me, I did wonder why there was a couple down there. They've switched referees at half-time. Sandro Scherer is not refereeing this game anymore. Uh, Lucas... Lucas Fandrich is the new official in the middle, so they've changed referees. He was uh, on fourth official duties. I think they may well have swapped jobs by the look of things. As that goes out for a Scotland throw and to be taken by Porteous. 56th minute, approaching the end of it. Scotland 2, Spain 0. It sounds incredible seeing it. Scotland supporters have got their flashlights on their phones en masse inside the stadium. It's a spectacular scene. The optics, the imagery is quite incredible, but not as incredible as the scoreline of Scotland 2, Spain 0. And the Scots came from two down against a far superior Spanish side all those years ago as Iago Aspas prepares to come on. This is the latest change by De La Fuente. It's the Celto, Celta Vigo striker who's going to come on. Actually, the spell at Liverpool and played under Brendan Rodgers there. And he has come on for Mikel Merino. Meanwhile... Scotland have another free kick, level with the Spain penalty spot, just about a yard from the far side, north stand touchline. McGinn's going to whip this in with the left boot, are things about to get even better? McGinn, he's gone for goal, Kepa keeps it out, just under his crossbar, and that was so very nearly three. It certainly was, it was audacious, wasn't it, from John McGinn, and he's meant it, he's trying to dip it under the crossbar at the near post, Kepa just reacts to it really late and manages to, to, to get a hand to it at the very top corner and that would have been some uh, goal from John McGinn wide out in that uh, right hand side and whipping it in with the left foot and almost fine in the top corner We spoke about experience Liam at the start of the game how much of an impact it would have when you look at Scotland and how inexperienced Spain are at international level when you look at the, the players that are on the pitch and so far for me tonight it's actually shown I think Spain in their game management There's a chance though Williams has found Guy is inside the box pulls it back big opportunity for Aspas is just on Scotland throwing bodies in the way and Porteous has done magnificently there as he slides in all his teammates have gone to him I think he's injured himself in the process yeah, I think going to need a replay at that one because there was a lot of bodies in there, but there's no doubt that Portis was brave at, uh, with the last gasp uh, challenge. Two Spanish players there that get stuck in amongst them, but then the, the challenge comes in from... Caught, he's caught his studs, hasn't he? Yeah. Portis. Back up, though. That's good to see he's hobbling a little bit. This pitch has come, on, come in for some serious criticism recently as we see a replay of Kepa and his crossbar, I think, managing to keep that John McGinn free kick out. He was bending it towards that top right as he was watching. Yeah, he was almost caught out. Brilliant whiff on the ball from John McGinn. We know how deadly he is and how much quality he produces. Certainly tonight he was looking to try and catch the goalkeeper out. Had insult to injury, you would need to say, looking at the scoreline. Here is Robertson for Scotland on this near side. Level with the edge of the centre circle in his own half. It's a long ball looking for Dykes. Underneath it is Garcia, and that's out for a throw-in to the Scots. And then about the midway point of the Spain half down below us. Steve Clark watching on. He, you can never tell. If someone showed you a snapshot of Steve Clark's face during a game without the scoreline, you wouldn't know if they were winning or losing. And down there he is, the picture of calmness. He'll be delighted, Liam. He'll be absolutely delighted with the performance, the shape, the, the, the high line that the back five have managed to play as well. Oh, Dykes is unlucky. Just about kept that in at the byline there. It's just crept over and it's a goal kick to the, the visitors as he managed to flick it back into the box. Spain yep. take it quickly with Kepa. Sorry, Willie, 60th minute, Scotland 2, Spain nil. It's just when they go into that back five, but it's not a deep back five. You, you, you know... Hanley is making sure that it's a back five that's pushing out whenever they can. Yeah, it's almost like a mid block, isn't yeah. it? Chance for Spain, cross comes in, headed away by Hanley. Down that left, they came. Scotland come away with it with McGinn. And he's overhit that one for Tierney, he's going to get there ahead of Williams, he just elects to put it out for the throw in, though. There's a 
a dodgy one towards him as we tick on to the hour mark at Hamden. An amazing scoreline of 2-0 Scotland against the Spanish. Out to the left, the visitors again. There's another cross coming in, headed away by Porteous. Out for a throw-in, level with the Scotland six-yard line. But in a hurry to take it, understandably, Jeremy retrieving the ball, leaving it for Jose Gaia, who bowls it back the way to Martinez. And this currently is a scoreline that will send shockwaves through Europe. And it sends a bolt, a tartan bolt through Group A. Here is Carvajal as the ball switched out to the right for Spain. Back to the right of the centre circle for Garcia. Out to Williams on this near side. He's attacking Robertson, trying to stick with him. Williams back to Carvajal. He gets the ball in, headed away by Porteous. Header comes back to the edge of the area. It's Aspas just turning it back, having got it from Rodri. Scotland forcing them out, though. Jeremy is to go back the way to Martinez. Now it's collected by Ceballos. 29 of the 90 left to play. Spain in possession with Rodri. Short ball back the way to Ceballos. Now he's shifted it to the right here for Garcia. Carvajal to Williams, right-hand side of the box. Blasts it in and over the bar. I think Aspas has got the final touch on that. He and Hosselu went for it at the six-yard line. And it goes over the crossbar and it stays Scotland 2. Spain nil on 61 and a half. Yeah, it's good build-up play from Spain. The Scottish back line just at two or three yards too deep. It's another dangerous cross. It's probably a let-off, actually, for Scotland because you've seen those ones being turned in just off the first touch, Willie. Yeah. So, and the pace is in the ball as well. It doesn't take an awful lot for the striker to just go and get your head over the top of it and get it on target. Just anything, really. Unfortunately for, unfortunately for us, it, it was a really poor touch, uh, um, you, you know, at the end of the cross. But that, that's really the first time a, a movement like that with Williams is actually getting behind our defence you know most of it has been a lot wider but in that occasion it was a good move trying to find him again Williams pace to burn Tierney reads the danger and does brilliantly again finds Robertson he keeps it in he's actually won his team a throw in down below us 62 minutes on the clock Scotland 2 Spain 0 we're going to go back to Craig Levine now just to see get his calm measured take on where we're at right now well, who would have thought we were where we are right now? Um, I mean, I think we we're very, all very hopeful before the match. There were a lot of signs that uh, that Scotland were heading in the right direction, and that Spain were weren't at their absolute best at this minute in time. But um, I think the only the most uh, sort of really, really silly person would have thought <laughs> would have been 2-0 up at, at this point, but. I mean, it's going to be a, a really, really difficult game for concentration now, and tiredness can come into it. I just wonder if maybe there will be, will be some substitutions to aid with that. Yeah, he'd be loath to change it, won't he? 63 in. Scotland defending well again. Hickey with a diving header clear. Ceballos collects the scraps over on the far side. Rolls it back into his own half for Inigo Martinez, who moves it left to right of the circle for Garcia. Out to Carvajal, looks up, clip ball forward, Williams is in behind Robertson here, he's down at the byline, Williams wins the corner off Robertson. Although the flag's gone up, I think, offside, free kick Scotland, 63 and a half minutes on the clock, sometimes if it's your night, it's your night. Might be one of those nights. So far it seems that way, Liam, marginal again, but it's a good decision from the assistant referee on this side, he's gone just a half yard too early. And it is, it's a tricky time. We spoke earlier on as well about game management from the manager, Steve Clark, and, and would he look to change it just now? I think we're getting pictures of him just now having discussions with his backroom staff. But I just think it's a horrible scoreline because the next goal is so, so important if you don't get it. Um, and I think Steve Clark will understand that. He doesn't want to change things and unsettle the group because they're doing so, so well. But there'll be a couple of players out there that will start to toil in the next five or ten minutes because they've put an awful lot of work into this game so far. It's going to be a Spanish throw in deep inside their own half to be taken by Danny Carvajal. 65th minute. And Carvajal can't keep it in play when he got it back. Scotland throw in. What a good performance this has been. It's been brilliant from the Scots. They are giving everything out there. Robertson bowls it back to Tierney, clips it to the edge of the box where it's booted away by Garcia. 
And the halfway line, Porteous heads it out to this near side. Williams beats Robertson in the jump. Rodri nods it forward. McGregor just losing out there to Hosselu, but Hosselu's header's actually gone to Dykes. He can't break forward, but it breaks to McTominay. He slips it to the left of the box here for Robertson. He's won the corner of Carvajal. And Scotland score a third. Because you know, even at two, you're not sitting comfortably. You're not, but you know there's still a load of energy out there, isn't mm-hmm. there? You know, whenever Scotland lose possession or uh, whenever Spain are in possession, even in you know the final third, um, Scotland are right on top of them. So I'm not seeing anybody yet. Wilton, Wilton. Um, so you know, I, I suppose the manager has got to take everything under consideration. You would expect legs in the midfield to be a little bit weary now. Will he make the change? Corner, McTominay, it's low, it breaks around about the six-yard line and spy in clear. McGregor, short to Christie, who clips one towards goal. It's well wide, goal kick, and stays Scotland to Spain nil as the Spaniards prepare to make their latest change. Hosselu is going to be replaced by Borca Iglesias of Real Betis. He scored 12 times this season. He missed the World Cup in Qatar, and that's despite the fact he scored 19 last season. So he's a big danger man. The Betis player, he comes on to replace Hosselu, who didn't or wasn't able to repeat the heroics despite his chances of Malaga on Saturday. It's a dreadful ball out by Kepa, straight to McGinn, crosses it into the box. Kepa gets there ahead of Christie, who fouls Kepa, and that's a free kick to Spain as Kepa decides to try and get Christie booked by lying down in uh, apparent agony, and then gets the ball, jumps straight back up and passes the ball when he sees Christie's down. I think that's okay if he wants it all about at this moment. I, I, you, you know, if yeah. it's running down the clock for us, then, you know, bring it on. How are you feeling, Leanne, going into the final quarter of this Scotland 2 Spain nil? I actually feel calmer now, Liam, than I did for that period in the first half, thankfully. Um, it, it's tough not to get caught up in it when we're here and we're watching it, and you feed off the, the atmosphere around us as well, and you look at the energy on the pitch. Yeah, a little moment down there, it's uh, Carvajal, he's been yellow carded in the end up, and it was he and Aspas who are arguing with uh, Tierney, I think it was, speak at Spain in any case, but Carvajal was booked, and he gets the ball out on this right-hand side, Carvajal, infield to Williams, toes it infield for Rodri, McGinn's little challenge, but it breaks Spain's way with Gaia, clips the ball into the Scotland box, blocked by Porteous, taken down by Rodri, can't make it work for Spain, that's going to be a free kick to the Scots, but a foul by Iglesias, and uh, Tierney's down as well, so's Porteous, it's the, the walking wounded down there, Christy Porteous and Tierney all appear to be injured, Tierney looks like he's the worst off. Yeah, Christy also looks like he's struggling just from that collision with Kepa a minute or so ago, he certainly looks like he's potentially hobbling, there's a number of Scotland substitutes out warming up, Billy Gilmore looks like he's going through it, a bit of serious. Yeah, he's running up and down the touchline. You would expect there, it to yeah. be changed pretty soon, Liam. I think if you freshen up, one of those front players in, in Christie, um, possibly Dykes, we spoke about Kieran Tierney, possibly would be changed anyway, just off the back of limited club football of late and putting in the shift that he is. I can see him looking across to the dugout just now, so hopefully. Just you don't take any risks. Yes, I'm just trying to make sure James McFadden's OK. He's working for Five Live. <laughs> he's, he seems all right. Thumbs up as uh, the long ball forward there by Gunn goes all the way through to Kepa at the edge of his own box. So 21 to play, plus injury time. Scotland 2, Spain 0. It is Garcia slipping it to his left for Martinez. And Kenny McLean appears to be getting ready to come on for the Scots. Spain have it wide in the left. That's a great turn there by Jeremy as he makes his move towards the Scotland box, rolls it wide left for Guy at the byline, first thing cross is blocked, and that's going to be a, a corner. I think whoever's blocked that's taking yeah, one in the hickey. face, it's Hickey, yeah. yeah. It's a sore one, right in the side of the head, I think he's going to be OK, he's going to get back up. The Spanish players, it, well, they've lost they're it, haven't assuming they? that Aaron Hickey's time-wasting here, yeah, he's, he's just taking the ball he's, flush in the face. He, he, he's, he's came back onto the park, Liam. That's what they're ah. complaining about. It was off the park when he took the knock. But they've lost it. I, I, I mean, the Spaniards they, have, have lost their, their composure. Any composure that they've had has went out the window. Kieran Tierney looks as if he definitely is yeah. toiling. Thing is, it's a head knock. 
you know, the referee won't yeah. allow play to continue with a player off the pitch with that type of injury anyway, so I've got no idea why the Spanish players are allowing themselves to get caught up in it. Well, we saw Harry Kane doing that in Naples last week. He was injured and then rolled himself back onto the pitch. I guess it if it's a normal injury, Liam, it, anywhere else in the body, yeah. but the reality there is the yeah. Spanish players are swimming. Yeah, Ceballos with the cross from the corner, and eventually it's Rodri who nods it down into the ground, but it's a comfortable take for Angus Gunn. We're in the final 20 minutes here at Hamden. Scotland to Spain nil. It's a poor header from Rodri. I think he should be doing better uh, at the back post. A decent one. It's John McGinney's up against him. He's, he, he's not met it properly. I thought that was a, a decent opportunity uh, for Spain and it was wasted. That's excellent. I'm looking at is it is because Borja Iglesias was hiding. Oh, well, look at this. Onside, Dykes, right-hand side of the Spain box. Chips it in, a poor ball. He'd Christie around about the six-yard line. The flag's actually gone up late on after that move as Kenny McLean waits to come on for Scotland down below us. Sorry, Liam, all I was going to say, he's hiding in Angus Gunn's net there yeah. and the fans actually reacted to warn the players and the goalkeeper that he was still hiding and Scott McTominay applauded the fans for letting them know because <laughs> they turned their back and played. Just one of those moments in football that you could probably find yourself getting caught out with. Not when there's 50,000 behind you. Scott McTominay scored early in both halves to give Scotland a 2-0 lead against the three-time European Championship champions. And we would allow them to take a grip of Group A. And what a start it would be. Still lots of work to do, though. And it's Spain with Gaia flipping it forward. Jeremy's in space, left-hand side of the box. Hickey comes to meet him now. Jeremy Pino slipping it back down the line. Infield to Ceballos. Up against McGinn, he's had it nicked off and Ceballos throws himself to the ground. That's going to be a free kick to Spain over on that left-hand side and Hickey's pulled up again. I think Steve Clark's going to have to look to his bench more than just the ones here. It is a Spanish free kick and this is almost about, well, six yards away from the left angle of the box. Bang level with the 18-yard line as we hit 72 minutes in Glasgow. Scotland 2, Spain 0. Big moments big moments in this group Spain free kick Danny Ceballos of Real Madrid takes it and it comes it's a good one headed away by Hanley Williams picks up the scraps right hand side of the box faced by Porteous he'll do well just to keep make sure he doesn't foul him Williams is away from him though dancing around and he passes it towards goal and Gunn holds on 72 and a half played Scotland 2 Spain 0 Williams overcooking it he was tempted though, wasn't he? He was, he was. And Portis, I think, he was, <laughs> he was tempted to dive in. He was. And if he had, then I don't think there's any doubt that Williams goes down. Because his, his hand was out tugging again. You know, the, the, the one in the first half, it was Portis as well. He, he needs to watch that. He's a little bit fortunate to get away with it. I always think it's tricky for defenders now, because initially when Portis goes out to defend, he's more worried about tucking his arms behind his back, which makes it so difficult to shift your body weight as well when you look to transfer the weight. A misunderstanding there. Liam Cooper is about to come on. There's a misunderstanding between Robertson and Tierney, but Tierney clears anyway. So Cooper and McLean will be on for Scotland shortly. Yeah, you'd think Tierney would come off, wouldn't you? You'd think he's struggling a little bit, yeah? Yeah, you would expect it to be Tierney. I'm also looking at it. I wonder if it might possibly be Lyndon Dykes that makes way and even just push John McGinn up one and put Kenny McLean in that midfield just for some fresh legs. Scotland 2 Spain nil, 73 and a half played with Carvajal on this near side a clip ball it's clever towards Aspas headed away by Tierney then Robertson knocks it out for a throw in claims it's a Scottish ball it's going to be a Spanish ball and Scotland will make the changes so Christie is coming off to be replaced by Kenny McLean who'll come on to win cap number 29 Ryan Christie's been a sweat soaked shift as usual a fine player he is and Norwich City's Kenny McLean will replace him and we are imagining it will be Tierney, yes it is and Leeds United's Liam Cooper is going to replace Tierney Cooper will win his 15th cap his first cap actually since the disappointing night here against Ukraine last June in that World Cup playoff semi-final and he's been injured recently Cooper so he's not had much game time he need to be switched on in the first moment and the first moment for him will be facing this Danny Carvajal throw-in level with the Scotland 18 on the main south stand side. 
Tierney still being helped off. And I mean, Alexander Sinchenko is a magnificent player, right? World class. <laughs> That's why Tierney can't get into the Arsenal team. But what a player he is. Scotland, like, lucky to have a player like Kieran Tierney. I know for so long managers didn't work out how they could play he and Robertson. Steve Clark's cracked it big time. Throw in for Spain. Carvajal's throwing that straight out for a goal kick. Well, that would do. 15 to play. Scotland 2, Spain 0. <laughs> five, time, five time Champions League winning <laughs> fullback. Can happen to anyone. When things go your way, they go your way, Willie. Absolutely. It does have that feel about it, though. I'm probably a bit apprehensive to speak too soon. Well, Spain so, score, it's a very different game. That's is, the thing. They is. get it back to within one. It will be up the Alamo. <laughs> as. Uh, Gunn prepares to take this goal kick. Been shown a yellow card for that, Liam. To Gunn? Yep. Yeah. Time wasting. And Gunn gets rid of it. 76th minute. It's too high for McTominay. Headed in field. Cushion header. Which Aspas nods back the way to Garcia. And now it's a Carvajal on this near side. And back in field for Garcia. And they're still not comfortable at 2 nothing up, really, when you're up against one of the top ten sides in the world, no matter what kind of state they're in. And the Spanish public aren't in love with their national team just now after their performance and exit at the World Cup finals to Morocco in the last 16. There's another loose ball from Inigo Martinez goes out for a Scotland throw-in on the far side. Scotland leading this by 2-0. to nil. They're on the brink of history here. And it really does unlock this group for them. Remember, the top two automatically go to the European Championship finals in Germany next summer. Barcelona's Gavi is going to be on shortly. As Spain throw the dice for the last time. Here's Carvajal for them. Long ball, headed clear by Hanley to the edge of the centre circle. McTominay flicks it to the right of it for McGinn, who loses it. Now it's with Gaia. Little ball in field to the skipper, Rodri. Slips it forward to the left-hand side of the D where Hickey comes to meet it and he's able to get a vital touch to shift it out to the touchline. Here's Ceballos, though. Ceballos moves it left to right towards Carvajal, who loses it and Cooper clears. Now it's Dykes rolling it to McGinn. He's going to go long here, looking for Robertson. Awkward one to defend for Garcia, but it's a magnificent touch from the centre-back which uh, Willie Miller would be proud of as Spain come away with it. Scotland 2, Spain 0 with 12 and a half to play of the 90. It's, it's dead easy, you just block out the 50,000 that are here, you keep yourself <laughs> calm and you take it out there as though there was nothing at stake. It was almost double the crowd inside this arena when you were playing for Scotland, Willie, in the old Hamden, as Williams picks up on the near side, beyond the midway point of the Scotland half. Gavi waits down there to come on. Scotland defending for their lives here is... Cooper gets in the way of it and that's gone behind for a goal kick as well. And Spain make the change and Ceballos of Real Madrid will be replaced by Barcelona's teenage sensation Gabi who was on the score sheet in their 7 nothing route of Costa Rica in their opening World Cup game in November. He wears the number 6 shirt of his Barcelona manager Xavi in the camp now. Now that is pressure and a half and you consider He's uh, following in the football boots of one of the greatest midfielders the world's ever seen. He also happens to be his manager. Long ball from Gunn, headed away there by Martinez, out to that far side. Long ball forward, Porteous nods it back into the Spain half. It breaks the way of Rodri. And now Rodri, unchallenged at the moment, McGregor comes to meet him, but eventually shifts it to the right of the centre circle. The clock continuing to tick down, and there's yet another loose ball from Garcia, out for a throw-in. 79th minute with Scotland leading by 2-0. And, I mean, just about everyone, I think, if the Spanish team that was here 12 years ago could have passed out of the park like that, they would have been disgusted. It's incredible the, the, the amount of the wayward passes that we've seen from the visitors tonight, isn't it? When you think of the quality that's out there in the pitch and the, 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 the fact that their temperament... And see, once you lose your temperament, things like that happen. Your mm -hmm. concentration goes as well. And then all of a sudden, you can't pass to a teammate. It's quite incredible. 
Yeah, I think you can see that this is a, a group of players that haven't played together all too often. Breakdown in communication, just misunderstanding the movements and the expectations from one another. And thankfully, for, for a Scotland perspective, they're working really hard across the pitch, but they certainly don't think they've worked as hard to, to cause and, and to force as many errors as what Spain have given tonight. It is Carvajal knocking it back infield there to Garcia. Everyone bar Kepa's in the Scotland half right now. Short ball to the left of the circle where Martinez rolls it out to Gaia. First time looking for Jeremy. Jeremy keeps it in place, done well as we enter the final 10 minutes of the 90. If it was a boxing bout, it would be the last round. As Spain collect the ball here with Garcia. Square ball for Martinez. Controls with the undersole, rolls it with the left, forward it goes, and there's another loose ball from Jose Gaia. And every time that happens, it just takes a little bit of the pressure away from the stadium. I think what it does, though, it gives Scotland the belief that, that this team don't have any answer to the setup that Steve Clark's put out there. I think their back five have been magnificent. If you watch them throughout the game, they haven't dropped too far deep. At every occasion, they're wanting to you know, push up and, and, and squeeze the space, which helps your midfield as well. And, and Spain don't have any answers to it. They simply don't have any answers so far to how Scotland are playing. I think that's Aaron Hickey that's gone to ground. He's going to need to be replaced. Nathan Patterson has just made his way back in, certainly to get his tracksuit bottoms off and get himself ready for the pitch. The referee's just waving a finger at the watch on his wrist. I don't think it's time wasting from Hickey though I do think he, he, he's been a bit uncomfortable certainly for the last 10 minutes or so yeah he's uh, down receiving treatment over on the far side Stephen Naismith down there just encouraging Nathan Patterson a lot's made of the fact that Scotland uh, have struggled to find homegrown strikers and Stephen Naismith was actually the last homegrown striker to score for the Scotland men's national side Lewis Ferguson's going to come on as well. What a fine season he's having in Italy with Bologna. Nathan Patterson's on first, though, and he's on for Hickey. What a good replacement that is. Two fabulous young right-backs. And for so long, we were struggling to find one of that level, English Premier League level. John McGinn hasn't scored tonight, but he got that crucial opener against Cyprus here on Saturday. And he is going to be replaced by Lewis Ferguson. As uh, McGinn is encouraged to hurry up and go off the pitch by Jeremy Pino on the far side. On comes Ferguson. Scored in his most recent appearance for Bologna in a 2-2 draw with Salernitana. And the former Aberdeen player comes on. Another terrific replacement. And what a good squad Steve Clark has here. You just get the sense that this is a special era. And a result like this simply underlines that. Throw in for Scotland over on the far side. The clock continues to tick down. Nobody leaving early tonight. What a celebration it will be. As Spain try to win it back on the far side. Pino hooks it over oh. his head. And Porteous is brought down. The yellow card's out. It's just yellow. It's been flashed at Aspas. I think there are many feel this should have been a different colour. And it may be something that is looked at by the VAR, but Aspas has absolutely clattered Porteous. Oh, well, I mean, it's outrageous. Yeah, he's, he's, he's got no intent to play the ball whatsoever. The player's mid-flight, got no opportunity to control his body in the manner in which he falls. It's just a real lack of discipline from Aspas because he's got caught up in the, the this evening, he's got caught up in the scoreline and the lack of quality that his side has shown tonight. Well, the thing is, the referee should be asked to look at that again. Yeah. He should be asked, surely. I mean, that looks to me that, it, that it's, it's definitely a yellow card. There's intent there. There's no attempt to play the ball. He's just trying to wipe Porteous out. And it's just a yellow card. Ah. And you Thanks. get a yellow card for time wasting. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Robertson takes the free kick. It's headed away by Spain. Run about the penalty spots. We move towards the final six of the 90. Dykes knocks it into the box. It's an important header away by Martinez, who was brought down. And that's going to be a Spanish free kick inside their own area. 84 minutes played as Steve Clark shakes John McGinn's hand down below us. He hasn't scored tonight, but yet another magnificent performance. His performance is outstanding almost every time he pulls on a blue jersey. 
whether he scores, I think he makes the players around him better. Liam constantly, his work rate, he leads by example, he leads the press so well, he takes the pressure off the striker when he's isolated, like he has been tonight, Lyndon Dykes, for some time. And defensively, he's just so, so good. Spain in possession with Garcia out to Williams on the near side, he controls it, now he's facing the Scottish box on the right-hand side, taking Robertson for a dance down towards the byline and winning the corner off a combination of the Scotland skipper and Kenny McLean, the sub. Just approaching 85 minutes, Scotland 2, Spain 0. A sensational scoreline. Will it be a sensational result? In comes the short, well, it's dinked it out to the edge of the box, Carvajal, and he overhits it for Aspas. And it goes behind for the goal kick, and the Scotland fans are loving this. They're going to be loving it even more in five minutes plus injury time. And stay Scotland 2, Spain 0. I have to say, I was at Pitodri, I saw Aberdeen throw away a 2-1 lead and lose 3-2 to Rangers, so anything's possible. Absolutely anything's possible, but Willie Miller, Scotland looked pretty comfortable out there. Yeah, different scenario though, <laughs> and I won't go into the Aberdeen side of it, but the, the, the back five for Scotland have been absolutely magnificent tonight in terms of not going back, not going back anywhere near their penalty spot, making sure yeah, their penalty box, making sure that they're playing a high line while still defending stoutly and, and that, that has been that has been the bedrock of the success tonight yeah the two goals have been fabulous but defensively outstanding yeah it's been a brave performance in many ways but it's plenty nice about it as well this is an international side that knows what it's doing Spain at a hand and it's not Spain I'm talking about Williams with a poor touch allows Robertson to sweep it clear and a few more seconds ebb away from Spanish hopes. A couple of thousand Spain fans off to our left in the southwest corner as the visitors collect wide on the left. It is Gavi rolling it to Rodri. Out wide left it goes. Gaia back in field for Rodri. Rodri looks up, thought about the shot. Instead, he drops the shoulder, drags it back, and plays it out wide left to the overlapping fullback, and it comes headed away by Hanley. Gaia will pick it up again, level with the Scottish penalty spot. Short ball there for Jeremy, who's back the way here to Inigo Martinez. And then Gavi flips the ball in, it comes off Hanley and over his own bar. Could quite easily have gone into his own net. Corner only, 87 on the clock. Scotland 2, Spain 0. Yeah, it just slides off the boot of Hanley, gets himself into an area, actually comes off the shin, doesn't it, when we see it back there. But he's in a good area to defend at the contact and the ball just isn't great. It's just a bit of pressure that you wouldn't like to be under just now. Outswinging corner from Williams and it comes. It's headed away brilliantly there. Really important header by Dykes. Spain come again with Carvajal. Two and a half of the 90 left. Scotland leading by two to nothing. It's Williams now attacking Robertson, dancing into the box. He's found Gavi. Gavi also dancing around. Williams surely was offside there. Robertson clears anyway. Flag has gone up. He was offside. Scotland two, Spain nil. Scotland free kick. I've just turned around to a few Scotland fans behind me to see how calm they are. They're not. It's the only national team, I think. It could be 2 nothing up going into the last two minutes and the fans are still stressed. I know, and you can feel that when you look around the stadium. I think any other national team with this type of result would probably be in their feet and they're going to start singing now. I think they could possibly feel that we're edging closer and they will. They'll kick off. They'll go absolutely crazy if it remains like this at full time. The good thing is, the good news is that the players don't look too stressed. No, they, do they? Don't, yeah. they don't. And I love it. They're celebrating every challenge, every decision that goes their way. They're high-fiving. They're enjoying it. Well, here goes Williams, though. He's in behind right-hand side of the box. A delicate chip ball, which is headed away by Porteous. What a performance it's been. And Scotland win a free kick for a foul by Rodri inside the Scottish box. And that is a free kick. We're in the final 90 seconds of the 90 minutes. Scotland are going to bring on Lawrence Shankland for the closing stages of the match the heart striker, he's having the season of his dreams as well, 21 goals for his club, he was a call up for this after C. Adams withdrew injured and he'll replace Lyndon Dykes who again over this double header has had his say even if he hasn't scored Shanklin for Dykes Willie he, he, he's worked uh, extremely hard uh, Lyndon Dykes, not been an easy shift for him, he's not had too much company up there um, you know, and uh, he's been up against a couple of big, strong uh, central defenders as well. Held the ball up uh, to to allow, you know, some support from the midfield. 
Um, so he can be more than pleased with his performance What's a tonight. Touch by McLean down on the near side. Unfortunately, it breaks down. He was deep inside the Spanish half as Aspas looks to slip it out to this near side for Iglesias. First time ball back to Carvajal. Spain still plugging away. Scotland, though, 2 nothing up on them as we approach second half stoppage time. We're about 25 seconds away from that right now here on Sportsound. The closing stages. Scotland are so, so close to the most sensational of victories. David Garcia rolling it out to Williams. Level with 18. Back onto the left peg. Crosses the ball in. Gun will claim. Gun will claim. And it stays Scotland to Spain nil. That's not good enough, is it? You know, Williams in the ball. Six then. minutes, Willie added. Six minutes away from a key, key victory and one of the best victories in recent years. Listen, they've the, the defended so well tonight. Uh, you, you know, I'm not going to tempt fate by saying that I don't see uh, Spain scoring, but with six minutes to go and the performance that that back five have put in, in fact, the whole team have, uh, have put in, it's just been a wonderful evening for everybody to enjoy. The players, you know, must go away from this one with a huge amount of confidence to take forward. If they go to Oslo in June and win... <laughs> They're so close to qualifying after just three matches. I mean, that would be just amazing. The Georgia at home in the other game in the group in June, with that double header, and the group goes on ice for a few months. Almost at the end of the first of six minutes of stoppage time, Carvajal knocks it out to Williams on the near side. Back to Danny Carvajal. Clip ball to the edge of the box. It's headed clear by Hanley. That back three and the two wing backs over the last couple of games, and Cyprus obviously don't pose as much of a threat as Spain do but they've been superb to a man as that shifted to Gavi over on the far side Gavi then returns the ball to Garcia right in the centre circle out to this near side it comes to Nico Williams level with the Scottish 18 back to Carvajal Carvajal knocking it through to Gavi lovely turn Gavi across the face blocked brilliantly again this time by Cooper they've all put a shift in even the subs have had an impact in both these matches shows you the strength of the squad that Steve Clark has as Williams goes back the way to Garcia shifts it desperately to Inigo Martinez out to the far side it comes back the way to Martinez from Gaia long ball to the right hand side of the box Carvajal first time ball back away and it's clear by Robertson who played two of the six four left four minutes away long ball out to the near side for Carvajal controls with the right foot slips it to Gavi Gavi trying to get it back to him he's found him Carvajal his cross is cut out it does loop into the box and it's headed behind by Cooper for the corner Spain corner with just under four minutes of stoppage time left still the Scotland fans bite their nails but they're nearly there out swinging corner coming up potentially from Gavi he's taking it short rolling it to the right angle of the box for Carvajal on his left hand side he's to turn back to the right finds Gavi chips the ball into the box and headed away by the man of the moment McTominay McGregor helps it on its way drops to the edge of the box a volley for goal which is well wide from Jeremy Pino and that sums the Spanish up quite frankly three minutes just about half the injury time's come and gone at the end and it is Scotland 2 Spain 0 what a performance, what a performance when you look at every single player across the pitch into a man, their game management all over the pitch tonight has been outstanding, I think the way that they've dealt with the game plan, they've dealt with the expectation, they've dealt with the opponent, both in 1v1 situations and as a collective unit, the work rate that they've put in, as you mentioned that they're if one player misses a, a defensive opportunity, another player steps in and deals with it and the substitutions that have come on have filled those gaps and filled those voids exactly the same as the players that have departed the pitch. They've been absolutely outstanding. It's been a mature performance, hasn't it? You know, one where you accept that you're playing against a quality side, one where you know that you've got to be organised, one where it's a back five, but an acceptable back five, but when... You know, you've got possession, then that back five becomes a back three and you actually get the wing back forward too. It's, and when you've got McTominay, you know, finding the back of the net the way he has done um, recently as well, you know, that confidence just goes right through. This is a magnificent performance. It's built on that defensive uh, stability. Um, but with uh, the quality of player that's out there tonight in a dark blue jersey, I think we've all got to be very privileged in watching it.
free kick Grant Hanley brought down and now they're beginning to celebrate Leanne <laughs> about a minute and a half left of the injury time and only now are the Scotland supporters able to relax somewhat only now and what a night and this is just the start of the night for the Tartan Army you can be assured of that a full Hamden a national team they have fallen in love with over the last couple of years and it could be Richard asked the question earlier are we on the brink of entering a golden era or are we already in it it would appear to be the latter it's still only match day two but the top seeds are being put to the sword here we're in the final minute of injury time Spain come again with Garcia rolls it out low to Carvajal looks up at the Scottish box headed away by Cooper Carvajal's cushion header back to Osasuna's Garcia who finds Athletic Bill Bows Martinez. Difficult night for the new centre back pairing as his low ball forward towards Iglesias, cut out by Hanley. Breaks the way of McGregor, scampers away from his man and from another one, and it's Callum McGregor. McTominay's on his bike. Can McGregor get away from the challenge? He can. Scotland are three on two. Could it be the most incredible climax? He's found Shanklin, pulls the trigger, deflected, and Kepa holds on. As McTominay clashes with the goalkeeper. Oh, that would have been some finishes. McTominay's yellow carded for that. But we're into the final 10 seconds just about here. The shrill whistles from the Scottish supporters will be replaced by sheer jubilation any second now. Spain continue. We've gone into a seventh minute of stoppage time. The referee's got his whistle on his lips here. That's it! What a long night it's going to be for them, but in the best possible way. It's two wins out of two, and they've just beaten the top seeds. 
at the start of Group A. It finished here. Thanks to the new darling of the Tartan Army, Scott McTominay. Scotland 2, Spain nil. Scotland in the Euro 2024 qualifiers. Live on Sports Sound. From BBC Radio Scotland. There's no substitute. As the rain continues to tumble from those dark, leaden skies above the National Stadium, not a single player, not a single fan cares a jot about the weather as the players walk around applauding the fans and you can hear exactly what the fans make of the players, 16 of them, all told who they have watched take on the might of Spain and sent them packing with a 2-0 victory. Astonishing night at Hampden Park. Let's get some quick reaction. Kenny Miller joined us beforehand. Uh, he was doing the telecommentary. He's, we've got him for about five minutes, I think. You did say beforehand, Kenny, you had a very good feeling about tonight. Uh, the players have gone out and proved you right. You know, I must say, I, I don't think I could have imagined it being as good a night. I did believe that uh, the team was, was capable of a, a real good performance and a and potentially positive result. But what they've done is they've, they've, they've absolutely surpassed my expe expectations. Outstanding from the first whistle to the last to a man, every single one of them who stepped foot on that pitch. And, you know, even the guys who never, who were supporting them and, and, and cheering every challenge and celebrating every goal, they were super superb, they had to weather the storm but she knew that was going to come at times with this team, they were going to have a lot of the ball they were going to ask a lot of questions but they, they dealt with it, and when you need that little bit up when the ball hit the crossbar a bit of luck that Steve Clark was saying, you're going to need a meet in games like this to win and, and to beat teams like this, but I'll tell you we thoroughly deserve this result tonight and it puts us in a wonderful position I was hoping with the, with the two teams qualifying that we might not have to go through the nerve shredding uh, action of the playoffs towards the end of the, end of the the season and this result puts us in prime position to actually go and carry it out jobs far from done yet but what a wonderful start and it takes us back to that 2006 campaign when you get off to a start a good start and get momentum and results and points in the bag at the start of the group you can carry that on through a group that time we just fell short but this group of players with the games that are up and coming their performances like this there's no reason why we can't go and achieve that not since the 12th of September 2007 have Scotland pulled off a result which will have the whole of Europe sitting up and taking notice. That, of course, was Paris and James McFadden. It's a long, long time ago, 15 and a half years. But that is a result. I mean, that is going to have uh, people involved in football right across the continent, Kenny. So, wow, look at what Scotland have just done. Well, what they'll do is they'll look at it as a Scotland v Spain game and then they'll think Spain will just go there and they'll do what they're expected to do. And they'll just underestimate this group of players. And I've said it all along, this group of players are capable against against toe-to-toe -to -toe against the, the best teams, particularly at home, on a wet and windy night here at Hamden when the Spanish team come and make eight changes and maybe underestimate us a little bit. You know, they would have knew after six minutes when McTominay put the ball in the back of the net that they were in for a game. And every challenge was greeted with cheers for the Tartan Army. The goals were celebrated again like they should be. And it was just a wonderful night. So you're right, what it does, it doesn't put us on the map because I think this team, by making the yeah. Euros a few seasons ago, have shown that they're capable. Over that time, I think we lost down and we never showed our best version ourselves in the Euros. But with performances like this, there's no reason why we can't be going back there again next summer. As it stands, Scotland have six points, Spain have three points, Norway and Georgia one apiece, Cyprus uh, yet to pick up a point in the group. Um, it kind of almost feels a bit of a shame that we have to wait until June now um, before Norway away and Georgia at home, Kenny. Listen, it is because this is the, this is the thing with international football, though. You start to get some real good momentum and you're, you're fully confident. We've had a brilliant three or four days now with, with the six points out of six. It was, a, it was a steady start to the campaign against Cyprus, a, a real positive professional performance, and we got the job done 3-0. Listen, it maybe flattered us a little bit, but this tonight, this tonight never flattered us. This was 2-0. For me, yes, there was a little bit of pressure, but it was comfy. There was no point where I was, particularly in the second half, you would expect the goal 
to be under threat and getting peppered with opportunity after opportunity. Well, that never came. We defended excellently. Ryan Porter's headed everything away. Grant Hanley was there, and when Kieran Tierney went off, Liam Cooper came on and done the same job. It was just a top, top performance, and like I say, it puts us in a wonderful position, and it's been an a, a, a outstanding international break. Probably, I think, if anybody would have taken four points out of the six for the opening of this group, so to go away with six is, is sensational. It's outstanding, Kenny. Thank you so much. We'll let you head off and uh, join our television colleagues. Craig Levine, of course, uh, with us. He'll have been sitting up, sitting back during that second half, just lapping it all up. And, I mean, it is remarkable, Craig. There was a 10-minute spell from the 20th to the 30th minute where Josselou heads straight at Garney. Then it's a header, it's a bar. There's the Robertson clash with Poro, the VAR decision. Was it a red card? Bit of uncertainty there. Rodri then headed just over. Pero had the strike at gun tipped over. But that was it, really. Wasn't it? We weathered that 10 minute spell. And actually, as Kenny said there, that second half was as comfortable as you might have hoped for against a team like Spain. Yeah, I agree with you. I also think Spain helped us. I, mean, I think taking Jocelyn off was a very, very bad move because in the first half they were putting loads and loads of crosses into the ball. Second half, they didn't cross the ball, or very rarely cross the ball, and that was because he was off the field. So I think they kind of played in our hands a little bit. They had us on the ropes for that 10-minute spell, and they didn't press at home in the second half. They, they resorted back to the sort of, you know, short passes round about the penalty box. And they're only putting two or three crosses in, and I think that that suited us. We had just about all of our players back in our half, and we, we killed the space round about the 18 yard box and did that exceptionally well. But also, they were sloppy at times today as well. I mean, a lot of very rarely did see a, a Spanish team passing the ball out of the park so many times, under no pressure, so many times in a game. But when it come back, come back round to it, I mean, it was an absolutely brilliant performance, defensively first and foremost, because I felt that the, I mean, everybody defended exceptionally well, but I felt that the centre backs were brilliant, yeah. and I thought the two the two wing backs were excellent as well, and I think you need that that solid foundation to be able to build and to move forward. And we're getting that, you know. I, I feel confident about every time we put a centre back in in the team. You're saying to yourself, "Well, he's solid. You know, he's not going to make mistakes. He's well, listen, mistakes happen, but I mean, generally they're focused. They work, they work exceptionally hard. Young Porteous is he'll throw himself in front of a train, you know, for, <laughs> for Scotland. You know, and, and it's brilliant. It's brilliant to see. And the, the punters love that. Eh? They love uh, players who who will. You know, dying the penalty box yeah. to stop a goal going in. So, no, I mean, it was, it's been an absolutely brilliant. Like I said before the, I wondered before the game if, if this is the next step for for this team to, to to win one of these big matches. And you know, for me, this isn't a surprise at all. And you know, I spoke before the game as well, um, doing a, a few uh, interviews, just asking, uh, sorry, just talking about this is a game that we could definitely win tonight. Uh, you know, our form recently. Um, the way our, our tra trajectory against the trajectory of, of Spain uh, led me to believe that you know this is a game that was eminently winnable and uh, you know I'm so thrilled for, for Steve and the and the players and and for the supporters as well you know it's been a long time coming a match uh, sorry or a performance and a, and a result like this it kind of put me in I kind of recall some of the the, the games back in the the 80s I'm thinking that so, you know, wonderful players that we had, the likes of Sunis and Dalgleish and, and, and many, many others um, during that era. But we would regularly win games against what would be seen as some of the, the bigger sides. France and Spain are two immediately I can think of at Hampden Park where we just blew them off the park, just just brushed them aside. And, and it had that kind of sense about it tonight other than that 10 minute spell? Yeah, I didn't feel, I didn't really feel under any pressure whatsoever. You know, I just felt that they didn't look, other than the, those crosses in the first half, and, and I thought we were a wee bit defensively, a wee bit um, lacking during those spells of, of picking up inside the 18-yard 18 box and, you know, a couple of free headers and such like. Um, but other than that, I, I, I really didn't feel that that they were any better than us. In fact, I felt that we were probably on the evening better than them. And, and bearing in mind as well, we, we maybe could have scored another couple of goals as well. I mean, Dykes is a, a great chance at the end of the, um, the first half. Um, and then we had that breakaway towards the end as well. So, 
Yeah, I mean, altogether, Richard, it's been a brilliant three or four days. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure Steve, uh, Steve Clark will be the happiest man of the lot. But I'll tell you what, young Scott McTominay must be pleased with his, his performances over the last few days. I mean, that's incredible from him. He scored one goal previously. If yeah, if I'm one goal in 37 international appearances. Yeah. And then he's got and four and two. I mean, it kind of reminds me of that, that little purple patch that James Forrest had when he got the, the five goals, the hat-trick and the double in, in successive matches. The only five international goals he scored. I mean, let's hope there's an awful lot more to come from Scott McTominay. But, um, look, he will get lots of headlines and he deserves them, obviously, for getting the two goals. Um, but every single player... I've got to say, I've got to admit, I had a slight panic because I hadn't actually noticed that John McGinn... Uh, and Aaron Hickey had gone off at exactly the same time. I thought there were two separate substitute slots that were used up there. And when I saw we're putting Shanklin on, I just about fell off my chair. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a fourth interval. Um, and it wasn't until I managed to have a quick look back and realised that um, I had got a bit confused over him again. Anyway, it, it would have been almost typically Scottish <laughs> to um, do something like that. But clearly they're far too professional to get involved in that um just brilliant it's 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 wonderful absolutely wonderful we'll get reaction of course from the scotland camp i think we can get some spanish reaction first of all yeah rodri is uh, letting us uh, hear what he made of that he's chatting with Cardine. we'll go down as a, a famous win for scotland just how well did you feel scotland played tonight uh yeah they were they were good today very with a lot of energy physicality I think uh, they push uh, and they punish our mistakes, um, and that's that's why it was a bit difficult then to to come back. Uh, I think we have chances in the first half. We have two or three big chances. We didn't score. We we must score if we want to win. Yes, and it was a, a very competitive match, a very physical match. What what did you make of of the atmosphere here at Hamden? Yeah, of course it's. First time we come here, but it's always tough and difficult. We knew it's a, it a good team, uh, but we try to focus on ourselves. Uh, I think, uh, as I tell you, I think we, we did good things, but uh, we penalised the, the mistakes and they scored two goals with simple, very simple goals, uh, to be honest, and we have to learn about this. And in terms of the group now, Scotland's six points from, from six, this puts them in a, in a very strong position, would you agree? Yeah, of course. Uh, we, we come here to win, but we couldn't. But uh, still, six games to go, so we we have time. Uh, we have to solve these these situations. Uh, I gotta say, fair play to Rodri <laughs> to, to do the interview um, and to essentially ask, answer questions about Scotland. I'm not sure that um, any of our players would have been just quite as accommodating to a Spanish uh, broadcaster had that been the case. But he, 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 well, there you go, Craig. He, I mean, he felt the goals were very simple goals, but essentially he accepted that um, that was a, a performance. I think as Liam so delightfully put it, a performance for the ages was from Scotland. Yeah, I mean, I certainly wouldn't have been answering those questions. <laughs> Yeah, um, he was very polite, wasn't he? He was. He was very polite. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, it can only be huge disappointment for the for the Spanish manager and his uh, and his players. Um, but they, you know that. I think we all knew that they're not really at their uh, at their best or anywhere near their best at the moment. Um, and we, what we needed to do was to perform at a level that wouldn't allow them to feel comfortable. And I think we did that very, very well. Um, we were very aggressive in our play in the first half in particular um, and very solid in our defending um, in the whole match. And, uh, and that, uh, you know, I think giving away simple goals is something that can demoralise a team. I, I mean, he almost said it, that demoralised his team. Yeah. Um, very simple goals that we scored. They made mistakes and we scored the goals. So um, it was great for us to do to them what normally they would do to other teams. More reaction uh, this time from the Scotland camp from Ryan Porteous. Well, Ryan, first of all, well played. That, that's a famous, famous win tonight. How would you describe it in your own words? Yeah, obviously it's a special night. Um, it's against a, against a really top team, and it's uh, you know we all believed as a squad that we could we could pull it off, and uh, you know games at home, you know, especially in this kind of 
in this kind of uh, tournament, in this kind of like competition, you want to try and pick up points, and you know we're, we're uh, fortunately, fortunately we've done that, and yeah, you know, it's, it's it's fantastic. But I think the crowd obviously played a massive part as well, and you know we're grateful to them as well. Just what does it mean to you personally to be part of a, a Scottish team that beats Spain for the first time in nearly 40 years? Yeah, of course it's it's brilliant. We knew that. Uh, that, that was the rec like a record that a lot of people were talking about, and you know a day that people still talk to today. So I think we've seen that as a group, and you know this group likes to, to break records. You know we've done it over the last you know four or five years, and but it's one game. You know it's, it puts us in you know a good position, but we've played, we've had two home games in the group, and you know we've picked up six points, but there's a, there's still a lot of football left to be played. So you know we're not getting carried away with so. Absolutely, just two games played in the qualification campaign, but the last um, set of results for, for the, the, the squad have been really, really good. This has been coming, hasn't it? Um, I think so. I mean, it's what we've been trying to put together for the last, uh, as I said, four or five years since the managers came in. I think we're, we're very fortunate to have him and the structure that he's put in behind the scenes. You know, he's kind of been, um, you know, quite... Uh, Honest with his squad, and he's always kept the same the same players in. If you're doing well, and it's uh, nah, it's enjoyable to be around the place. You know, there's not one kind of bad egg in that changing room, and it's I think you know it shows on the part we're all together, and you know the strength and numbers that we have coming off the bench once again tonight was excellent. Nice to have a new goal machine as well, and Mr. McTominay, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. I obviously it makes a change. Uh, McGinn scoring all the goals, so uh, no, it's, it's brilliant. He's a he's a fantastic player, and uh, as I say, they came off the bench last time and, and made an impact, and then tonight he was he was magnificent. So were you guys at the back. In fairness, talk to me about the, the defensive line, uh, about how much you enjoy going up against you know, some top, top players and keeping another clean sheet. Yeah, it's, it's the kind of games that uh, I like to be playing in as long well as you're defending the majority of the time. And, you know, you need to stay concentrated. You can't sleep on the pitch. And, you know, to, uh, to a tier for me, Granty and, and Kieran done that. Uh, you know, we got fortunate in the first half, I think, with the guy hitting the, um, the bar and Angus making a save as well. But, you know, other than that, I think they're a good team and they're going to create chances but we limited them uh, to very few and you know credit to the gaffer Nosta McPhee for having such a um, you know a kind of structure within that defensive line that we've been working on all week to, to help us through that. So finally played two, won two in this campaign, six points. What an excellent position that is for, for Scotland going ahead into the, the next qualifiers and, and looking at the group as a whole. Yeah but I think if you, you look at the history we need to you know we can't take this for granted we can't look at this as anything more than you know six points in the last two games we've got to kick on now because it's we know that we've got you know a few games a couple of games coming up in the summer that we need to be really prepared for that would be Norway away and Georgia at home it's a brilliant start it's a brilliant start to his international career three games nil nil away to Ukraine three nil against Cyprus two nil against Spain he's not seen a goal conceded uh, in his three international outings but so many. I mean, he was, as Craig, you've already said, he was outstanding. They were all yeah. outstanding. He, could, he should consider retiring. It's just, <laughs> doesn't get much better than that. Um, well, he might be hoping to see the campaign through. I guess, of course, it's a five-team group, so that's already a quarter of the matches played. We haven't conceded a goal. We've got uh, six points in the bag. Um, it's a, it's just a brilliant, brilliant start. And they're all going to say it, and they're rightly so. There's, there's a lot of hard work still to be done. But wow, what a chance they've given themselves. And Steve Clark said right at the start, didn't he, Craig, that I don't think we're going to need the playoffs. I think we'll go through from this group. He did. Yeah, I thought it was a bold statement at the time. But I mean, he obviously knew in advance, and what we're getting to see now, then and that is his teams improving. Um, I keep talking about evidence, but again, tonight's another example of that. We've managed to, you know, take on one of the biggest teams in Europe and and win the game by two clear goals, which is not an easy task at all. So I think everybody in that camp will be absolutely buzzing. But the confidence gained from this game tonight will be enormous. I'm absolutely sure it will be. Those boys will be absolutely buzzing tonight. Tom English, I think, back with us. He's he's got some stuff up online. There'll be much more to come. BBC.co.uk/sportsscotland. Just a joy to be uh, detailing that kind of performance and that kind of result. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it was fantastic to be here. The atmosphere was fantastic. It was absolutely unforgettable. The performance was unforgettable, individually and collectively. Um, I, just, I just have 
I, you know, it was, it was a it was a nice piece to to write actually, because even you know when Spain were going at Scotland, I thought, do you know what this Scotland team is so mature now, so together, so organised. I wouldn't say I wasn't I wasn't worried, but I was confident that they that they were they had a stability about them, um, and they had a clinical side obviously with the goals. They, they had a tenacity, they had an intelligence, loads and loads and loads of heart. I just thought it was one of the best Scotland performances. I know, Richard, you've been around a lot longer than I have. But, <laughs> but it was one of the best Scotland performances I've ever seen. I just thought it was was top class from from pretty much from start to finish. It was, it was a joy to be here to, to witness that. You know, Gunn, I don't think he's had one save, is that true? One save, yeah, save. one probably, you'd say. You took the, the Pero shot, or Poro shot, uh, over the crossbar. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Probably, yeah, because yeah, uh, even the... Yeah, no, it was. I was thinking more of the, a couple of the second half, actually, from Scotland. But no, there was nothing, nothing in the second half that, that caused any great difficulty. No, um, like, it's just uh, the whole thing, midfield, every, every facet of the team worked. Every, every facet worked. The energy was brilliant. The, in the energy, team. the really aggression, yeah. um, you know, the, the quality of the football at times, top class. McTominay, you could name them all. Porteous, you'd be talking about Porteous. I said in a piece I filed that if that if the superstars of, of Barcelona and Real Madrid and elsewhere are weren't aware of the legend of Ryan Porteous, they are now, <laughs> because they thought he was really, really good. And Hanley was really good. Robertson led the team well. Um, there was there was just a doggedness about them and a confidence like they weren't they didn't care who they were playing tonight they, they were not overawed at all they came out their attitude from the first whistle was okay we're winning tonight and that's the end of it and they did well they did it'll take them yeah, a long way honestly well yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. the confidence is you know, once you get on a roll and you can just you, you keep it going and keep it going and keep it going, and as I said before, you need a big one. This is the big one, you know, where you've taken on somebody of great stature and, and won the game and, and stood up to the battle at times. You got a wee bit feisty. Oh, first half. Yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, I looked around at, at you and, and Willie in the first half when they were, were tearing strips off each other and you were salivating, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it was. And that, and that's what that's what made it such a memorable game. There were so many different bits to it. There was a real battle, there was an edge, there was a, an aggression, there was a badness, but there was some terrific football, brilliant defending. Oh, it was, yeah, it was, it was just majestic. It really was, right. Willie Miller, Leanne Crichton have um, lived a few moments just to get their breath back after doing the commentary. Um, Willie, you've seen many, many um, incredible nights, um, some for the wrong reasons, I guess, when you think about some of the things that have happened to the national team. But, wow, that's one that's going to live long in the memory, isn't it? Certainly, well, Richard. Um, you know, I thought the, the, the team performance was was outstanding. Um, I really enjoyed watching what uh, Steve Clark had in his mind for the game uh, tonight, with it with the back five and the four in front of the back five, and it was it was a formation for the game, but it, it worked a treat. And you know, not only was it uh, solid defensively, um, it gave us the opportunity to go forward as well. And, and you, you, you can add in the John McGinn free kick that uh, did it clip the bar or was it touched onto the bar? <laughs> It, it hit the bar. I don't even know that because yeah. initially I'd, I'd scribbled down he'd punched that away, Kevin. But when I saw the second replay, I, I think it's it's actually hit the bar. I don't think the keeper's yeah. got a touch on it. And and he's meant it. He, he, he's gone oh, yeah. for it, you know, with the left foot there, just trying to sneak it under that near uh, uh, post. Um, so you know, all all over, I'm watching the, the the back five, and I'm watching the communication, and I'm watching the fact that. You play a back five sometimes and you get camped, you, you know, in and around your box. The, 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 the reason for playing the back five tonight was to actually squeeze it, was to squeeze the game. So at every opportunity, they were pushing out. They were not happy sitting in the 18-yard line. They were pushing out to, you know, maybe 30 yards. And then if they were if they were pushed back, the minute they won the ball, they were back out again. They were quickly up to the halfway line. And then what happens then is that your midfield, you know, the gap between the, uh, the, the, the back five and the midfield is shortened. And it allows your midfield then to get up and, and, and support, uh, you, you know, support Dykes. He didn't get too much support Dykes, but he got enough support in a game that was always going to be a difficult game. And the fact that you can add in 
Um, the Shanklin uh, strike at the end, that, that almost uh, find, yeah. finds the back yeah. of the net too. And, and the Lyndon Dykes one just before half time. So that, there has been great opportunities, you, you know, maybe silly mistakes by. Listen, most goals are mistakes, by the way, unless there's something special in them. Uh, and, and defensively, they looked uh, rather poor. I thought, but you've got to be there to take the chance, and you know Scott McTominay's got that that timing to to be in the right place at the right time, and and to get another two goals was quite amazing for him. There wasn't there, there was no failures in the team. It was a brilliant team performance. I thought it was a joy to watch how Steve Clark has organised them. We thought that that's what he would bring to uh, to, to, to the national side. He's, he's brought it in spades, but he brought the other side of it as well. You, you, you know the, the the fact that you've got to actually score goals. It was listen. I mean, you look at Spain. So many changes. New, new, new manager, new players, new formation, new captain tonight compared to the other night compared to the World Cup. That's three different captains they've had, I think, in three different games. Um, so there was an opportunity for Scotland tonight, and my God, they exploited that opportunity. You know, they really, really took it. Uh, everyone, I think, a lot of people would say a point would have been a good result not for these lads because these lads their their mindset now is, is shifted that they genuinely when they say they think they can win pretty much every game they play they actually believe it it's not just talk they actually believe it now and that's the proof of it mm-hmm. when you this, look at this Le- stat- Leanne, it, yeah I was just going to ask you Leanne it's, it's a serious run of results that we're on I mean just forget about the, the friendly we don't we don't do friendlies anymore against Turkey in November but since that and we talked about this earlier since that defeat against Ireland thumping win in Armenia they've taken the Ukraine apart 3-0 to um, make sure that they took pole position if you like in the Nations League they then won against Ireland then got that draw in Ukraine they've brushed Cyprus aside ultimately without it well hugely impressive second half but but we're never in any bother and now they've done exactly the same to Spain it's um it's very very impressive right now isn't it it is super impressive and I think among that as we discussed on Saturday there's different types of performances yeah. different requirements when you look at even the, the performance on Saturday in a game that you dominate the ball for the most part to a game like tonight which I'm looking at these stats in front of me possession stats 75 25 in, in Spain's favor but with that Scotland had nine shots, Spain had eight on target, three apiece. So for having 25% possession over the course of this evening, they've managed to carry as much of a threat and more because they've converted the two shots on goal. Um, So when you speak about game plans, and I mentioned that during commentary, it's one thing speaking about it, it's another thing to then go and execute that game plan. And I've said it before, Scotland are as good a team, if not better, without the ball in the way that they work the shape defensively they're so robust, they communicate really well I think when one player misses that opportunity to go and defend, another player was there and and you've seen that in abundance tonight right across the midfield, right across the back line, down to the goalkeeper Um, and at one point I think towards the end it was Lyndon Dykes before he came off that was in clearing headers inside his box from, from set pieces so to a player they were absolutely outstanding and they've stood up in this recent run, as you mentioned, Richard, that within with the seven matches that I've got and Turkey was included in that. Four clean sheets isn't bad going as well. 15 goals for and only four against, which again, two came in that um, friendly game as well. So to keep clean sheets is a foundation for any good team to deliver success and what a fantastic start to the campaign. You know, I think when you get two home games, yes, Cyprus <laughs> was the, the easier of the two to then follow that up with a Spanish side that are unknown at this point because of the amount of changes. But if you miss your opportunity to maximise that home advantage, we know how difficult it can make a qualification campaign and they've absolutely nailed it. Very reminiscent of, uh, you think back to the the qualifying for France 98, Willie, when um, it was was based on the Craig Brown on a... An incredible defensive break. I think Craig makes a point. It was three goals conceded in that qualifying campaign. Um, I mean, Steve Clark very like Craig in that respect in terms yeah. of getting things very organised at the back. But as you pointed out earlier, there's there's an awful lot more to this team. And yes, we still don't have a 20-goal um, international striker, but we've got midfielders who can step up to the plate now. Yeah. And, and in some ways, quite good that it wasn't John McGinn. Well, you, you've got Scott McTominay and, and John McGinn now, so um, you know you're probably looking for another um, prolific goal scorer from midfield as well. And, and it doesn't really matter where the goals come from, uh, uh, does it? I, I think what Steve Clark and 
when he got the job and you know we were all pretty unanimous about it he was the right man for the job that you expected him that, that's the way he goes about his, his management he, he, he organises teams but you know there is the other part of it too so it's not a case of just defending out there uh, tonight that, that there was another aspect to it and that was when they won the ball so when they didn't have the ball then they were organised they were disciplined they they, they they, they, they rode their luck a little bit. I thought, you know, in the, in the midst of all that, I thought the central defenders just switched off for two or three occasions when the crosses come in into the box. It could have been, you know, costly um, at, at a time when Spain were really rampant. But then in the second half, there was no real threat. I thought they, they, no. they, they handled it really uh, comfortably. But but it was all about it's all about being organised, being disciplined, communicating as well. You don't see an awful lot of that, but I was watching it out there tonight. There was a lot of communication going on and you know Steve Clark I think has got the team now playing the way that he sees that they should be playing and he's getting results on the back of it as well and he's getting he's getting chances created uh, too so it's not all about defending the, defending a big part of uh, what Steve Clark's all about but the other side of it is pretty impressive too well very impressive um, and and I guess this is the kind of um, result, Craig, that the, the players can really feed off as well. It's going to take them a long way, isn't it, having beaten a team like Spain like this? Yeah, that was my point before the match about needing, you know, some confirmation of the, that, that they are making progress. And every now and then you need something to confirm that. And this does that. That This allows Steve to speak about this performance Um and the things that they've gained from it, um, and and it's not just a manager speaking and and, and just hot air. It's, it's going back to situations, going back to matches where you point things out that you know they did and they they were successful because they did those those things. And I think at the video analysis of the game, there'll be loads of stuff for them to use going forward. And I think the fact is though that when we when we watch it, the team are getting better. You know, I think we would all agree that that the team are getting better, and you know I, I think Mc, McTominay's th things happen in, in football that are, are quite weird sometimes. McTominay's not getting a game for Manchester United. He's now using all his energy to to do as well as he can for Scotland, and and that's just one of these things that's fallen into place. And I think it's helped enormously the the, the performance he's put on. So when he came on the part the other day and today, I mean incredible, really well. You know, and he's brought. I mean, he's, he's played previously for Scotland in a, in, a, in a deeper role, but he's got that uh, athleticism that not a lot of other players have got. So he's making up ground hand over fist to get to the edge of the box, or round about the box for, for to get a chance to shoot a goal. And okay, maybe maybe there's a deflection here or there, or, or even the second goal went through the, somebody's legs. But it's not the point. The point is he's he's bursting a gut to get into those positions, and it's worked for him, and it's worked for the team. And I mean, I think Aaron Hickey's been fantastic over the last couple of games. Um, I think he's improved enormously. And I think, you know, I'm thinking also about uh, about Andy Robertson. You know, maybe not had the best season for Liverpool, but I'll tell you what, his performances have been great for Scotland. So there's a lot of things about what's going on just now that are really, really encouraging. So, so encouraging. I know lots of the fans um, from around the country will be heading back. Um, got a few messages coming in. Certainly, Ed, sir, and uh, the sons of Wallace Bus, they're heading back up to Aberdeen. I'm sure it'll be uh, party time there and party time for the fans all around the country. It's a special, special night that they have witnessed at Hampden Park. Sellout crowd, and what a victory. 2-0. It was for Scotland. Scott McTominay got both goals. Let's hear his reaction. Scott, well played, first of all. Just tell me what it means to you to not just beat a team like Spain, but to, to score both of the goals. Um, obviously, yeah, that was what the manager said before the game, that we have to make sure that we're together and they're a good team. You know, We have to make sure that every time that we come on Hamden, that all the crowd are behind us and we know that. And I think tonight we did did that really, really well. They, we pretty much nullified the majority of the threat that they had in the final third. Granted, they had a lot of the ball, but I felt for us that we were, we were in control about the ball and that's something that we have to accept when we're playing against the top team. This is a, a famous night for, for Scottish football, a great night for yourself. Just tell me what it means to you personally. 
yeah, obviously, like you're so happy that you scored both the goals, but sometimes it's not the goal score, it's the collective, it's the teams. And for us, going back in the changing room, everyone's saying well done to each other. And it's not just a, a sole thing where it's the one who scored the goals. But as I say, for me, obviously, it's an incredible feeling and, and it's probably my favourite thing to represent Scotland at Hamden Park. And I absolutely love it. Absolutely. I wonder if this is um, one of the top nights of your entire career. Not just that, but four goals for Scotland in two matches in the space of just a few days. Yeah, like when you say it like that, it sounds, sounds a lot. But as I say, um, the boys have been brilliant. And that's not just me being modest, it's it's genuine. If it wasn't me who scored the two goals, I'm sure someone else would be stood here who did score the two goals and say the same thing. The boys were different class on the night and we stuck to the game plan really, really well. Incredible. Absolutely incredible for Scott McTominay. Uh, and let's be honest, as we um, settled down ahead of that game against Cyprus... I don't recall any of you, Leanne, suggesting that Scott McTominay was likely to emerge as the goal hero over the next couple of games. <laughs> no, I think I actually said quite the contrast that we wouldn't be speaking about Scott McTominay grabbing goals tonight. Uh, it just shows you what football can do and, and what players can produce. And credit to Scott McTominay, I think, as Craig mentioned, he, he's perhaps out of favour at, at club level just now. I think it's always admirable when you keep yourself in top condition. Um, I know it's his job and he's expected to, but to come in and, and produce a 90 minutes of football as he did, with a level of quality as he did, with a level of composure and if he isn't having the best game, I, th I think he's a type of player that does, like others, make players around him better, um, because he has that calmness and, and composure that you need in the middle of the pitch, and he covers the pitch so well, um, an outstanding talent, regardless of where he's been deployed in this team for Steve Clark he, he's produced some really top performances big moments, big goals, he enjoys it here at Hamden um, and he's managed to grab a, a number of goals in, in the space of four days which is quite incredible um, and I'm not too sure to be fair with the, the chances across the game that if anybody would have scored tonight because they were um, there weren't too many to write home about but I think the timing of the goals and, and the manner in which Scotland scored them tonight certainly swung the match um, in Scotland's favour I think it's always important especially when you come out after half time that next goal is vitally important and he, he sensed the, the fragility in the Spanish back line he sensed danger with those second balls and he was there to tap at home and, and what a brilliant performance um, as I see over the two matches yeah I um... I think we're all left kind of almost shaking our heads, Willie, aren't we? We weren't anticipating <laughs> oh. it to be. Now, come on, there was a bit of optimism. I'll give you that. The, 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 I don't, I didn't, don't recall any frightening, of you suggesting. Frightening, there was frightening optim optimism um, yeah. before the game, Richard. Was there not so much so that you're sitting here thinking, have I seen this movie Other before? Other than Liam Sledgehammer <laughs> of his stats that he hit us with at one point. <laughs> yeah. No, I think we were all optimistic um, about uh, Scotland, but I, I thought that optimism was surpassed by the team performance. I thought the performance was outstanding. You know, it was a great team performance, um, and you can pick out individuals, um, but there were all stars out there, even the ones that came on as substitutes uh, too. It was, just, and the manager. I think the manager takes a huge amount of praise for the organisation that we just witnessed uh, tonight against a. A good, maybe not a great Spanish side, but a very, very good team. Um, although they, they, they lost their composure completely in that game, so much so they couldn't pass the ball to each other. I mean, could you imagine me sitting here and saying that the Spanish team couldn't pass the ball to each other? I mean, now if I'd have said that before the, the, the game had started, then eyebrows would have been raised. But that's what actually happened in the second half. Uh, listen, it's it's a privilege to be here. It, it was a wonderful night. I think the fans thoroughly enjoyed it. They were here. No one left here. They all uh, waited to celebrate with uh, the team. The team will take an enormous amount of confidence for this game. Absolutely an enormous amount to uh, having, you know, put Spain to, to the sword. Still a long way to go, of course, as we know, but the optimism is definitely there. And rightly so, Tom English. Um, when you see that kind of performance, collectively and individually, it does give you reason to be optimistic. And I think maybe what makes this different is that it's genuine. There's reason to feel the way we do. It's not just the blind optimism that served Chick Young so well for 30-odd years. <laughs> yeah, look, that was just Chick hoping, hoping for the best, but probably prepared for the worst. Uh, yeah, this, this has got real substance to it. You know, this is this is good performance after good performance. It's victory after victory. Um, I think a coming of age performance for this particular Scotland team that would fill you with confidence. 
and you start you, you, you trust this Scotland team now to deliver a performance and that hasn't been the case for, for a long time and it doesn't really matter to Clark and his heroic management and the culture that he's created if he loses players if he loses one, two, three players he carries on he promotes others he fills them with confidence and they get the job done it's, it's worth looking back, honestly. It's worth looking back at those games in September and all the players that they missed before and during those games. And yet they still carried on and on and on. Same again tonight. Uh, looked so confident. They had to weather a bit of a storm in the first half, but they get the goals. And it was the tenacity and, and the class, and the organisation. They all, every one of those players knew exactly what was expected of them. They knew yeah. that there was a total clarity, no confusion whatsoever. And uh, it added up to one of the most memorable nights at Hamden in an awful long time and a huge amount of hope. And as you say, it's built on reality here. It's not just built on on desperation. This is This is built on sound foundations. Angus Gunn uh, must be delighted with his introduction to international football with Scotland. Eh? Um, two clean sheets and has made a couple of saves in the two matches. Easy. What jammy, isn't he? Jammy. He comes, in, he comes into the best Scotland team in years. Glory hunting. You know, Ryan Porteous. I mean, it's obscene. Three games, Three no goals conceded. Sheets. Three clean yeah. sheets. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, it's brilliant, but it's comical at the same time. Um, yeah, and, and I think it was you said us earlier on, you, you're kind of waiting for the next international window to roll roll along yeah. because you can't get enough of this stuff. You know, this is this is this is really this is this is good stuff. Uh, just watching a couple of replays there. Um and totally, we touched on this at half time. I think we both said I felt Andy Robertson was lucky not to be red carded for the incident there. Um, I've just watched the, the. I didn't see it properly in the second half there, but Aspas, the, the substitute who came on, when he jumped into Ryan Porteous, um, and he's kind of shouldered him in the chest. Mm. Uh, I, I hadn't noticed that Ryan had, had turned all Spanish when he fell to the ground because he rolled over about 17 times and was holding his face. Um, so, the, the, so there's still that wee side, wee side to Ryan, but I think he's he's become a national treasure for uh, the defending that he's uh, being doing. And you can never imagine that all things being equal, he is going to continue to have a big part to play for Steve Clark in the months ahead. Just, just brilliant stuff. It's a 3-0 win against Cyprus. It's a 2-0 win against Spain, and it's the best possible start to the campaign. So let's hear what the manager made of this evening. Steve, you put a smile on many millions of people's faces this evening. What does it mean to you yourself personally? It's another three points. It's another step on the, hopefully on the road to Germany 2024. Good performance. Uh, we wanted to put on a big performance against the top seeds in the group. We thought we were good in the game. So, yeah, good night for everybody. But as I said to the lads in the dressing room, six points doesn't qualify you. So we've still got, we've still got a way to go in the group. It's a huge step, though, isn't it? And a terrific start to the campaign. You couldn't do any better, six from six, and, and you've beaten a, a marquee name. Yeah, I think, I think we had to try and capitalise on, on the, two, the two home games to start, to start with, and that's what we've done. Uh, beating the, the seeded one, the pot one team, is, is, is important. But it's just one step. I know it feels like a fantastic result, and everybody can, the supporters can certainly go away and enjoy it. The players will enjoy it. But we have to, we have to stay focused on what we need to do. We have to get enough points to qualify for, for Germany 2024. That's that's the aim. So we enjoy it. We've been a good camp. Six points. We couldn't ask for any more. Uh, but two difficult games to come in June. So we have to be ready for those. Absolutely, but this is one of these nights that, that validates all your work, all your planning, all the efforts from the, the, the players. A famous old night at Hamden under the lights, first win against Spain in nearly 40 years. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Uh, I said to the lads before the game that a lot of the media before before the kickoff was was about the team where Kenny scored that wonderful goal coming in and curling one top corner, so I said that that's the kind of legacy you can leave. You can put a mark on Scottish football, if you like, in years going forward. But personally, I hope it's not another 38 years before we, we have a result or a performance like that. I'm hoping we can do it again pretty soon. Scott McTominay, 
two goals for you tonight. I know you maybe don't like to talk about individuals, but I'd be remiss if I didn't mention them because four goals in, in two games is quite an exceptional contribution. Yeah, good. Arriving in the box well. Uh, obviously, we got a little bit fortunate when the lad slipped for the for the first goal, but we capitalised on it. We, we, we've spoken at length about getting bodies in the box, and Scott arriving from that deep position seems to be seems to be working for him at the moment. So four goals in two games, it's, it's a good effort for Scott, but a magnificent a magnificent effort from everyone else. I, I couldn't stand here and say who was who was the best player on the pitch because we had so many. Absolutely, all over the pitch in defence as well, because obviously Spain came at you. They they, they had their moments. That, that they're a good team. They're a very good team. Very good team, a lot of changes tonight, but we're still good players on the pitch. We, the only time I was a little bit concerned was towards the the middle to end of the, the first half. I just felt we dropped a little bit too deep. We got sort of pegged back. We couldn't get out the we couldn't get out of the penalty box. When we when we did that second half especially, I, I thought we were reasonably comfortable. This sets you up superbly, doesn't it, for Norway away and then uh, Georgia in in June? Yeah, tough games to come. Uh, Norway away, uh, Georgia Georgia here at home, so. Like I said, we've got six points. We need, we're going to need a lot more than that to qualify. So we, we go away, we'll enjoy the, the next couple of days and then start getting ready for the, the games in June. Very well done. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> Steve Clark, I know you love a, a post-match Steve Clark interview, Willie. Um, have you ever heard a man trying to keep a lid on things just <laughs> quite as desperately as Steve was there? Uh, he's, he's pretty good at doing it, though, Richard, isn't he? Um, you, you know, I, I think he... <laughs> He used the word uh, good on a number of occasions and then he, le- he, he really let rip with magnificent, was it, that he used um, towards the end there? Um, listen, th- that's his personality. He, he, his personality is to keep a lid on it. Um, I think he's absolutely right to do it. He's right to remember everyone that it is only six points. Um, they, they'll enjoy it, but behind the scenes, they'll, they'll be enjoying it. Behind, when he sits down with his whatever tipple he, he enjoys after a game, he'll have a lot of satisfaction with that performance. I thought it was absolutely brilliant in terms of the organisational side of it. So he, he will be he will be delighted uh, with it. Um, although he won't show it to us, and I don't expect him to show it to us, but uh, within the... the, 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 the the, 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 the dressing room, I'm sure that uh, with his uh, coaching staff, they will be absolutely delighted that they've set out a plan tonight and it's worked a treat. Well, it certainly has worked a treat. There is no question about that. Guys, thank you so much uh, for your coverage throughout the course of this evening to Liam, to Willie, uh, Leanne, Tom and Craig. What a night it has been. We thought it was a good start with a 3-0 win against Cyprus at the weekend. Well, it just got a whole lot better. Another double from Scott McTominay. A sellout crowd at Hampden Park. And they have witnessed Scotland's best result in international football since France in September 2007. It's a brilliant start to qualifying for me, Richard Gordon, and the rest of the Sports and team. Good night. You're now going to join Roddy Hart. You're listening to Roddy Hart on BBC Radio Scotland.